leeches in once more that has hit pad first and up goes the finger Jack Leach has uh, broken through a fantastic bit of bowling by Jack Leach sweep and he's been missed it's hit the body and that could be the end of Rohit the umpire's finger has gone up the ball has crashed on field umpire on screen please. into the off stump Nitin about five inches below the bales and that is another huge huge wicket ah! beats him straight away folks thinks he's got him Root wow. thinks he's got him and the finger's gone up golden arm has worked for Joe Root extraordinary I wish that pant uh, never did get to tuck that shirt in Root again <laughs> and he bowled him Washington Sundar is beaten by a beauty Joe Root is the man this morning. An absolutely worldy from Joe Root. Down comes Akshar, drives, he's caught at short extra cover. Oh, Joe Root, what are you doing? A huge wicket mark, huge. Here's Root. Oh, top edge sweep, it's gone up into the air. Does Joe Root have a fourth wicket underneath it? Is Zach Crowley who takes the catch? And India are 134 for nine, leading by just 22 runs. Extraordinary stuff. Six wickets for 35. India at home in India. Root to Jasprit Bumra. Gets ah! across his stumps. It's hit him on the back leg and the finger has gone up. Joe Root. 6.2 overs. Three maidens. Five for eight. Well, a remarkable morning. Uh, we've said it enough. We'll say it again. Um, India bowled up for 145 in response to England's 112. That's a lead of 33. Um, they called tea on us unexpectedly, or the morning tea break, which means we've had a 20-minute interval, and we've had to move uh, my chat with Kevin Peterson until later in the day. More about that as we go through this next session of play, which will, folks, be very tense. Here's Neil Manthorpe. I think the rest of the test match will be tense. I'm not sure that we're going to get very much respite from the tension other than drinks breaks, and uh, it might still be running pretty high then. Suddenly a lead or a deficit, depending on which team you are, of 33 runs. Possibly never felt uh, quite so significant, and not surprisingly, first innings hero Axar Patel, the left-arm spinner, is going to open the bowling on strike as Zach Crawley, England... Well, you just, <laughs> you just concentrate on the next ball. Don't worry about uh, about the, the lead or the deficit. It is 33. Zach Crawley batted beautifully in the first innings for his 53. And uh, he's going to uh, not have the relative comfort of Seamus. Bowled him! First delivery! Zach Crawley didn't know whether to come forward or go back. England and North for one first ball. Axel Patel fired that one in. It's clattered into middle and off. And we've had 21 wickets. Well, he got off to a flyer, Zach Crawley, in the first innings. Opening it up with a new ball, the pink ball against Seam. Well, there was no chance that was going to happen in the second innings. Axel Patel takes the new uh, ball. He actually pitched and turned. It wasn't a straight honour from Patel, Zach Crawley. Good job you got your runs in the first innings. Falls for naught, and it's naught for one here on TalkSport 2. Steve Harmison, what do you make of all that? It did turn a little bit, but again, it's just playing down the wrong line. Absolute wrong line. He, when I first saw it, I thought, he's not ready here. It looked as though he's like pulling away from it. I thought, oh, the, 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 it's a dead ball. It might be a dead ball. He's dead, Lent, not ready. Isn't it? It's Lent. Yeah, it's, it just it was just visually it was bizarre. Um, it brings Johnny Besto to the crease, somebody that Goffey wants to, to to try and go and express himself. But boy, listen to that crowd. <laughs> listen to the noise that acts out. I mean, the fielders and Rishi Pant's going to have Goffey. He's got to get off the mark first before he plays a few <laughs> shots. The trail by 33. But I, I think Johnny has got to go in there. I think once... I, I honestly believe that's the way he'll go and play, actually. If he can get off the mark first, he'll, he'll try and be positive. He'll sweep. He's a pretty good sweeper of a, a cricket ball. But it's Haksar Patel. He's actually on an asterisk manners. Yeah, he took the last cricket of uh, the, of the uh, first innings. And uh, he's taken a wicket with the first ball of the second innings. And so he's on a hat-trick. Three wickets in three balls. They can be spread over two innings. Well, I'm not sure that uh, there's been no change in the field. Are we, 
<laughs> that we've seen. I don't know whether he remembers he's on a hat trick or whether Virat Kohli does. They would normally have a couple of men extra coming in close. Johnny Bairstow is uh, the new man at number three. England are naught for one. Well, the amazing thing is, most of the wickets have been LBW and bold from the straight balls, and so the stick to that plan it seems to be the mode of the dismissal during this game. Here is Axon, a hat trick. Johnny Bairstow sprays a slow sweep. He's got LBW. Axon Patel has a hat trick. Bairstow sweeping his first delivery. He's been hit somewhere on the body but because he was so low down he's reviewed it he's reviewed it sweeping his first ball can he be reprieved by DRS <laughs> what is going on here I said he was going to come in I thought he'd get off the mark to start with sweep shot was always going to be his way to try and get and rotate the strike and score but it's pitched on middle Oh, I think he's a goner. I really do. I think he's a goner. I think it's an hat-trick yeah, from Axar Patel. It's him just underneath the rib cage. Yeah, I think it is. I think he is gone. First few, I thought this is a hitting outside, outside off stump. Potentially umpire's call, which would have been out because it stays with the on-field umpire. But first, first, yeah, that looks very, very close. It looks very, very out. Yeah. That's what it does. It's hit him on the yeah, rib cage. He's out in exactly the same way that Rohit Sharma yeah, was. Exactly the same, Manus. Yeah, flat line when the It's hit him in the rib cage the on the flank. Ball tracking when ready. It's extraordinary. England have lost when this is confirmed. Two wickets to the first two balls of the innings. In Missing! Oh! He's bouncing over the top! Gracious me! Rewind! Rewind! It's not a hat trick. And the umpire Neil wow. Chowdhury holds his hands across his chest. Wow! And says reverse that. the decision. That must be because it's the new ball and the, I think it's got extra bounce, but unless that were a tennis ball, that looked out all day long. <laughs> I tell you what, Johnny Bester has reviewed this for everything but going over the top of the stumps. Everything but for going over the top of the stumps. He's hoping that he's nicked a glove that he hasn't felt. He's hoping that he's outside the line of off stump. He has not for one minute thought, I'll review this because it's going over. Here's Axel Patel, bowls. Oh, oh, he's bowled him! He's bowled him! <laughs> oh my goodness me, he's out to the next ball, reprieved by the DRS. And he's no idea, he just cannot pick up the length. Besto goes second ball. Axel Patel has three wickets in four balls rather than a hat-trick. But it's impossible to keep up. Well, we've seen so many times, haven't we, this uh, last two days. All the gear and no idea. Johnny Bairstow comes to the wicket. He's on a pair. He survives the Attrick ball by reviewing when we all thought he was gone. The next ball, guess what, boys? It's another straight honour from Axar Patel. Through the gate, Johnny all over the shot. Falls for naught, and it's naught for two now here on TalkSport 2. This is un. Unbelievable cricket. Yes, Darren, unbelievable cricket. And we talk about the straight honour. We talk about the defensive technique. Talk about where England's mindset is. But I've just turned around and looked from the 17 floors up in London and see three or four London buses outside behind us. And there was a London bus gone straight through Johnny Bairstow's defensive technique. A huge gap between bat and pad. Axar Patel hits a top of leg stump in Joe Root, England captain walks out, smile on his face because he was probably on his way down the stairs the ball before boy is this crowd Mate, getting, getting, getting I mean, going he was probably having a hot bath <laughs> he just got he just got five for eight of 6.2 overs he's probably having to have a hot bath to relax his muscles he's having to shove his pads on and now go back and bat Not for two here of no point, yes, no point three overs Oh, guess, guess, what, guess what Joe Root and Dom Sidney just did? Little glove punch. <laughs> oh dear me. We'll be alright lads. We're, no, we're none for two off three balls. Well we might as well start the next, tech, next test match in two days time and get it over with. <laughs> you, know, you know what? You can replay you can replay this entire test match and we still won't go five days. Yeah. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. We might as well get it over with this week. Absolutely. 
extraordinary. I've never, ever seen anything like this. Joe Root's on strike, acts up and tells him, Bowls out and beats him past the outside edge. Just misses off them. Everyone's a winner here. Breathless. Everyone's Every a winner. Every time a coconut. It's just, it's all the fun of the fairground. Impossible to w believe what we're witnessing. Except that it's true. Johnny Bairstow. Here is Axel Patel and Joe Root plays off the back foot and England are underway as he steers it into the offside for a single. It's the length of Axel Patel, it's the pace that he bowls that he's just impossible for batsmen to pick up the length. They don't know whether to play forward or back. Here's Axar again. Well, we uh, welcome our listeners on TalkSport to the most extraordinary scenes. England are none, a one, one for two. It's the uh, about to bowl the last ball of the first over of their second innings. They conceded a lead of 33 and they've lost two wickets before they scored a run in their second innings. They're one for two. They've lost Zach Crawley and Johnny Bairstow for a duck. On strike now, Dom Sibley for his first ball, yeah, and he comes forward and plays it defensively behind square on the offside. India were bowled out for 145. Jack Leach produced a very, very worthy performance, four for 54 in 20 overs, but Joe Root took five for eight in 6.2 overs. Five wickets for eight runs as India were bowled out for 145. England 33 behind on first innings and they are one for two. They are indeed and I can't see a seamer opening the ball in at the other end. We'll have to wait and see. We haven't got the pictures yet. But it's got to be it's got to be surely uh, our Ash. <laughs> I mean if they open with a seamer here. I mean the the amazing thing is we talk about who got the selection right and wrong, right? England obviously got the selection wrong, but could still win this test match, which would be remarkable. And yeah, as we thought, Ashwin's opening the bowling. <laughs> but you, you talk about a seamer not bowling in, in this in this second innings. Washington Sundar might not get a bowl. Ashwin in, down the wicket comes Joe Root, playing out into the covers. He pushes hard at that one, and he's coming back for the second run. We're not going to get a run out. Nish oh my goodness! It's like me. a T20 on has like, said not out. It's like a T20 international. This. It's like brilliant entertainment though, it's fantastic entertainment, it's brilliant entertainment, quality of the cricket from a batting point of view is not, not great, but it is, it is great entertainment, this is what it's like playing out in India, direct hit there, might have been uh, a, a different story, but <sighs> listen to the crowd, listen to the buzz, this is test cricket, great to see crowd back into international sport. Here's Ashwin again, bowls a low full toss and it's whipped away through the leg side, past Shubman Gill at short leg and for a single down to deep backward square I like the positive intent from Joe Root it was a tight second run but it was really intense and he wants to be positive he's got to just put out of his mind the fact that England have lost two wickets in the first over because you know what 120 could win this test match <laughs> ridiculous it's a long way away at the minute yeah I mean a target of 120 England will have to make 150 it could <laughs> it's not beyond the imagination what we've already seen you would say is beyond the imagination well it's so a bit of genius from one player isn't it you, you need something very very special from a talented individual and we've got some talented individuals in this side I thought Johnny Bairstow could have tried he didn't last long enough Ashwin in bowls to Sibley who plays from the crease if anything at half a pace back onto the back foot England are four for two after an over and a half but but we have got Joe Root who's at the crease he's looked busy since he's come in he's only just got in Ashwin again bowls Sibley pushes forward with the spin out towards mid wicket and then we've got Ben Stokes Ben Stokes yeah. is someone who it'll be interesting to see how he attempts to play the left handed option I think he will come in and try and be positive there's, I don't think there's any doubt uh, whatsoever but he'll come in and try to play a few shots Ashwin, three men around the bat, short mid wicket as well as uh, Sibley plays okay. with the spin once more, nudging it out to deep backward square and uh, they go through for uh, an easy single. Sibley 
does uh, like to play with the spin but he's got to bear in mind that the spin doesn't always spin as an off spinner with Ashwin he's going to look out for that carom ball and the leading edge and he does like to work it onto the onside plays the percentages my goodness me the crowd the Sada Patel Stadium is uh, getting the value for money he plays right back now Sibley to the next one from Ashwin nudges it out on the onside England are 5 for 2 a first innings lead of 33 for India means that England are still trailing by 28 at 5 for 2 the amazing thing about this test match so far is but all the talk leading up to it is but the effect the pink ball is going to have under lights but I think it's been the easiest time to bat under lights so far in this test match when we've had daylight the ball's been spitting and turning and bouncing but under light, it's been the best time to bat. Virat Kohli and Rohit Sharma made it look easy last night. Absolutely, and I think you, know, you, you look at, it's got to get to the light switched on. The lights have only been switched on once in this test match, Darren. <laughs> in, the, in the games, more or less, we are halfway through. Two slips, as you Aksar Patel in once more to Dom Sibley, and nudges it up to Ashwin at mid-on. And uh, there's no run. We've had an over and a half of relative quiet and it feels like the, the storm has passed in an over and a half here is Aksar Patel and uh, that's pushed out behind square on the leg side off the pad and there's uh, the beginnings of a, an appeal from Aksar Patel and why not he's, um, <laughs> he took 6 for 38 in the first innings he's got 2 for 1 in the second here is uh, the left arm spinner once again using his feet nicely that's well played by Dom Sibley nudges it out to just uh, to Ishan Sharma at deep mid wicket the, the thing is when you're away on tour as well in a test match and it finishes early uh, whether you win or lose you might have a bit of downtime you might be able to go for a game of golf or something but at these times in bubble life these boys are just stuck in the room so they're going to be stuck in the room probably another four or five days after this test match Yeah, well, they'll be able to practice, but they're pretty sick of sick of doing that. <laughs> it hasn't done that much as good as well, has it? Yeah, normally a couple of days off, and uh, yeah. Here's Axel Patel, and uh, that's pushed off thick inside edge again. Joe Root, once more, just struggling with the length against Axel Patel. Jared Kimber, what have you got for us? Uh, George Lohman has the best bowling average of all time in Test cricket of minimum 100 wickets. Axel Patel is currently well below that. George Lohman's at just over 10. Forward comes uh, Root again, pushing it to the covers, no run. I can't think of a single bowler who's ever started their career the way Axel Patel is here. George Lohman bowled on matting wickets as well. The no, pre-matting. Uh, yeah. lumpy lumpy chunks of wickets yeah because uh, uh, Aksar Patel again spins it past the outside edge as Root comes forward and is well beaten hang on a minute lumpy chunky wickets what's this <laughs> <laughs> this is flat they might have just got to put the stumps no, out here on this flat grass downstairs the way they were in 1890 <laughs> lumpy and chunky on me and you Darren it's <laughs> our <laughs> nicknames isn't it what's Aksar Patel's first class record uh, because he's just is it he was averaging 28 before he came into Test Cricket, in First Class Cricket. And he's currently averaging, was it 8 in Test Cricket? Well, it's easier, Test Cricket. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, Joe Root's bowling average in Test Cricket was 47 before this Test match. It's now 41. But, look, look, you were in Port Elizabeth. How well did he bowl in Port Elizabeth? Very well look, until he kept himself on. Yeah, he kept himself on against the tail enders and kept getting battered, didn't he? But... Here is Ashwin round the wicket, using his feet, and it's flicked just past leg slip by Dom Sibley. But using his feet, I think, is uh, is a good thing. I mean, uh, you just you really have the sense with Ashwin, obviously, but particularly with Aksar Patel, that a wicket could fall with every single delivery. Saying that, they've definitely had a chat, haven't they, before they've come out. I think it's quite obvious now. That was a drop catch, by the way. Um, at just slip, got yeah. a fingertip, Joe. They've just. definitely had that chat, man. It's about coming out, using the feet, trying to be positive, positive intent. Otherwise, they're just going to get one. The name's going to be on it. Here's Ashwin continuing around the wicket. And that's a big appeal for leg before wicket. It might be too high. It's an impassioned appeal from R. Ashwin. And it goes on and on. And he's now saying to Virat Kohli, it was hitting, it turned. It, it looked a bit high to me, R. Ashwin. Um, but he's absolutely impassioned about it. And he's begging Virat Kohli. In fact, he's ordering his captain to review it. Oh. And he's done so with one second to spare. 
and he yeah. has reviewed it. I think it's too high. Possibly too high. He looked as though he got a, a half decent stride in. It's whether yeah. it's done too much. Yeah. Um, yeah. And yeah. umpire's yeah. call yeah. is yeah. obviously yeah. on the field, yeah. not yeah. out. So yeah. this might go yeah. in, in yeah. Dom Sibley's favour. The only way that Virat Kohli can assert his authority as captain is to leave the review to one second to go, just to keep Ashwin in his place. To be, he's not reviewed really well at all, has he, uh, Kohli, during the old series? Let's be honest about it. But it's pitched on off stump and has turned and straightened. Nothing wrong with the line. Do you agree? Yeah, it's just the height again with the new ball, isn't it? The last one were like tennis ball bands to Johnny Bairstow, the Atrick ball. So it all depends how he. um, it sees the bounce and the height. Clipping is not good enough. It might be clipping, but uh, no, nothing wrong with the uh, impact. It's too high. Again, again, it's too high. And it, and it just looked immediately too high. I don't know, Ashwin, at some point, Varak cardi has got to say, Ash, you know what? <laughs> I agree. Ashwin, it just says it's not your decision. It's the keeper, wicket keeper's decision because every single time, Virat Kohli waits until there's a second left and then he does the review. He cannot let the bowler take control, the senior bowler. He happened with Stuart Broad a few years ago, and he then, he's ended up doing it pretty well now. But when he first started, he used to review absolutely everything. Yeah, but Goffey, when you were bowling, you thought everything was out as well, didn't you? Ashwin in again, and on the back foot, Sibley pushes it out, square of the wicket on the offside. And, and that's why you wouldn't have been able to ask me, because I would have said that's out every single time. Of course I would, yeah, because you want the wicket, don't you? If there's half a chance being given, you, you want that opportunity. Here's Ashwin continuing around the wicket. It's to slip and on the bounce. <laughs> oh, well, the straight honour from our Ashwin. It's been the devastating delivery of the Test match. It's a good angle as well, Ashwin coming round the wicket. I'm sure it was a carom ball. No, it wasn't. It was an off spinner. Dish went on um, with the, the lacquer on the ball. And a, a positive signs by... Sibley, the route in the last sort of 10 balls, they've been making good positive decisions. Ashwin again, Sibley pushes it up towards mid on, deepish mid on, Jasper at Boomer Fields, and they're allowed to go through for a single. Sibley five, Joe Root four, England eight for two. Still behind, 33 on first innings. So uh, still trailing by. 26, Joe Root 4, Sibley 5, <laughs> India bowled out for 145 on the stroke of the first uh, session being completed, just before the first session on the stroke of the tea break. Yep. That's pushed away, back onto the back foot by Root for a single to deep backward square leg. Well played from Joe Root, actually, Kev has talked many times about using your feet, doesn't mean you have to come down, getting depth at the crease and just let the ball come and ride the spin through onto the leg side good start from Joe Root positive and it's the challenge of the England batsmen they've got to try and quieten the crowd try and quieten Rishi Pant and the, and the fielders around them and they can only do that by building a partnership and staying out there and what I talked about being sort of positive decisions Root has either gone all the way back at the ball come to him and, and put it into the, the leg or the offside and, and Sibley's gone the other way he's trying to go forward he's trying to smother the bounce and trying to play the ball you know, coming into him and trying to cover that straight ball and if it turns and spits well then hopefully if he plays with straight hands and good te defensive technique then he'll miss it Max Patel in vicious bounce here and turn and very well played by Joe Root oh. who's committing himself to play defensively and the last possible second withdrew everything and just let it fizz past him well he got one like that in the second test didn't he off the glove he got an absolute unplayable delivery and he yet again got another one but he's got the right attitude here Joe he's got a smile on his face he's trying to remain positive here is uh, Axel Patel again and uh, that one is driven that's a super shot from Joe Root square the wicket on the offside he played it so so late such soft hands I say driven it was more of a, a caress really just opened the face on it manners didn't he just used the pace of the ball he bowled it quite quickly Axel Patel a little bit fuller than normal just opened the face on it and just pushed it out the man's out there on the the deep point boundary so it was an easy one come on what a start Axel Patel has made to his uh, test career and he's just got more and more devastating here he is again balls forward comes Sibley pushing it straight back to the bowler you're listening to commentary of the third test between India and England here on TalkSport 2 with the Times and the Sunday Times 
writing with an edge here is Axar Patel wide of the off stump and uh, you don't get to leave too many but that's one that Sibley could let go into the gloves of Rishabh Pant Virat Kohli is uh, going to do himself an injury with his, his excitement levels it looks like he's about to blow up he's um, using his feet very nicely again as uh, Sibley <coughs> pushing it up towards Ashwin at mid on and scampering through for the single there's a lot of noise out there, isn't there? And uh, let's say the concentration, you've got to remain on it. They're trying to put it off the noise of the crowd. Army's just talked about the noise around the bat. You've got to keep your concentration. Get, set your mark when you're ready, not when the Indian fielders are ready. Axel Patel in again and uh, it's pushed to square the wicket on the offside towards cover. There's nobody at point. Just bit Bumrah has to come from backward point and they go through for a single. Five overs gone. England are 13 for two, trailing by 20 with Joe Root on seven and Dom Sibley on six. The men out, Zach Crawley and Johnny Bairstow, who lasted, well, Zach Crawley didn't last any balls. Johnny Bairstow lasted one ball. Zach Crawley was out to the first ball of the innings. Yeah, and then Johnny Bairstow were out twice, but one <laughs> given not out on the day. <laughs> <laughs> out LBW, <laughs> were out and retrieved. then bowled. Yeah, so Second two ball. balls. Not ideal. I, I, I knew Johnny, Johnny's mindset going in there. I haven't seen him since he was a kid. He likes to sweep. He's normally a good sweeper of the cricket ball. Ashwin continues <laughs> and chipped away just past Shubman Gill at short leg. So poor old Johnny Bestos is not for three. But but the problem is that uh, again yeah. a player that's not been at the mid out in the middle, not been playing, no runs. He's been away from home. He's been at home for a couple of weeks, resting up. He's gone out to India. Suddenly on this pitch, turning square, and he's going in on a pair. The pressure of the game, and he's not had much net time. And and it showed. If he would have been playing and kept on playing cricket since Sri Lanka, he might have just swept that. Might have been a square sh square sweep, and he'd have gone away for four but lack of game time and lack of confidence. Ashwin once more and uh, that one is punched out towards mid-wicket and they go through for a single as Rohit Sharma does the, the tidying up. So w w would Johnny have even picked up a bat on his, his designated rest period? I mean, would he? I would imagine he would have. They talked about we had Gareth Batty for two test matches. We talked about how much Sam Curran's working and others are working ready for the one day series. But I would imagine he'd either he picked up a bat at Headingley. Here's uh, him, Ashwin again, and a uh, powerful sweep shot, very well played by Sibley for a single. But Manners Headingley on the leg side. But Manners Headingley at Headingley in the middle of the winter on a concrete base, and it's minus two, to 40,000 people in Ahmedabad is a completely... Not on concrete. Oh, not on concrete. Well, you can put it's the mats down. Different. You can put the mats down. <laughs> We've all done that pre-season, haven't we? Game situation yeah, is exactly. completely different. Totally, totally different. And it showed a player today, that innings for me, lack of confidence. Ashwin again, and that one spins, fizzes down the leg side. Richard Pant gets his gloves to it, doesn't take it cleanly. It's fielded at leg slip. So lots, plenty of turn. He's back over the wicket now, is uh, our Ashwin with his combination off spinners and uh, forward comes Sibley struck on the pad turning too much there's a polite inquiry from uh, from Ashwin but uh, not out is the answer I think Ashwin uh, he's obviously he's a smart cookie he's one of the you know the, the all-time great off spinners and I think he's going to use over and round the wicket to move Dom Sibley around the crease himself Ashwin again, more spin fizzing down the leg side and it's, uh, it's left alone by Sibley. What was interesting is that Sibley left that alone, it was pitching middle. It, it was pitching, was it that pitch middle stump, didn't it? And he's just, he's shouldered arms to it, he just left it alone. But I think that's what Ashwin's trying to do. He's trying to go from over the wicket because he knows it's spinning that much. If he gets, if he gets, um, if, if he gets Dom Sibley to go outside of off stump, and then when he comes over the wicket, if Dom, if Dom Sibley's fallen over or at any point his bat's coming because he has the tendency to bring his bat from second, third slip, and you know, that, that curtain reel that he does, all of a sudden if he comes from around the wicket and Dom Sibley loses balance or falls over because he's been that used to getting outside off stump from over the wicket, then all of a sudden Ashwin will feel as though he's in the game. Axar Patel continues and forward comes Joe Root playing defensively. I've, I, I'm in need of a... A, a break to catch my breath 
I need to go and process what's Not happened again. in the last <laughs> 20 minutes. A yes. lot. Mark Nicholas is taking over for the next 20 minutes. Very generous of you. The truth is I got over-involved with the coffee plan. <laughs> and you, you're all going to drink well, but I'm late. <laughs> Priorities. Them's the facts. 16 for 2 here. Akshay Patel now bowling straight and the ball does absolutely nothing and Root plays it off the back foot out to point. Went gun barrel straight that ball. Deep in the crease there Matt, very really deep, deep in the crease. Very deep, back forward, there are the keys here. Give yourself as much time as possible and that doesn't do anything either. England steal a single out of it. There's a few sort of screams of anguish from the nearby Indian fielders as Root dropped it out on the leg side and hesitated to uh, Sibley first it was Root who was looking for it he kind of just said what do you think Dom with his body language and Dom went and Root suddenly had to go but they made it okay and Sibley now fiddles about with his gloves tugging on the velcro tucking him back into place yellow handle on his bat or yellow rubber on the handle I should say and uh, he uh, is taking guard a slip and a gully Leg side, the uh, man at 45 behind square, mid wicket in the mid on with one deep out at square leg. As uh, Akshay Patel comes in now and bowls a ball that doesn't spin, he, he just rolls it out of his fingers on that occasion. It's back of a length, but Sibley's big stride forward. He's a tall man, Dom Sib Sibley. Um, defends it on the up, really, out to the covers, and there's no run. He waits again with the exaggerated bend of his knees, gets down, tries to drive, doesn't time it, Ro throws himself to his left or tumbles to his left and does the fielding. Right Sharma played well again this morning before getting given out RBW, ribs before wicket. Down on the sweep shot, Axel Patel, no spin at all, remarkable. Nothing has spun there and he's played forward, has Sibley defended easily and that over, guys, looked as if nothing was going on with this pitch at all. Exactly, uh, but both played it well. Totally different as well, which I think it makes for a good partnership. You've got Joe t getting as deep as he can in the crease, if he can, um, and riding the spin and playing with the spin. Then you've got Dom Sibley who's trying to smother it and get forward because he feels as though that's his best way of playing it with his technique. So, interesting, but they both look busy at the crease. I think what the England need to do is just try and get back 10, 12 overs, just put some doubt in India's minds, the spin bowlers' minds, create a partnership, change that momentum. And they've been busy at the crease, both Joe Root and Dom Sibley, looking for singles. So it's a good start, this. Ashwin then, round the wicket to Root back goes Root, the ball just spun a bit but Root played that rather well, he waited and waited and then he opened the blade and got uh, a single, oh no two in fact, where the big gap is at extra cover it's pretty usual for an off spinner on a turning pitch to bowl without an extra cover to encourage the drive, but then of course you've got to make sure that the ball's pitched up far enough to allow the drive, that was short and Root played it off the back foot plenty of urgency about Joe Root so far Interesting, Root versus Ashwin as he goes back, Root works at leg side, no run. You could reverse the numbers on their back as they go head to head here. 66 is playing against 99. Root 66 and RA 99. That spins, Root leaves it alone. He may have glanced his thigh pad as he got his hands and bat out of the way. Very important when you're playing spin and the bounce is uneven. If you're leaving the ball, get your hands and bat out of the way. Don't be lazy about leaving them around the danger area when bounce is unpredictable. Back goes Root to one that bounces a little more, plays it really well. Was first thinking of forcing it and then had to almost fend it off as it kicked up at him, almost with spite. Root in the first innings where he went back and he got caught on the crease by Ashwood. He's still playing back here. Sometimes you're going to get the good one and you've just got to say, OK, that's fine. And now he tries to work it off the back foot into the leg side. I think he was sort of back and then half forward, wasn't it, in the first? He's half and half. Yeah, and he just got done it, by a good ball. He did. And, yeah. and, he, and maybe you, he momentarily lost concentration Absolutely. and wasn't sharp in his response to the ball. Yeah, and you're allowed to. That's exactly what happens. And he's got runs to back himself up. Oh, that really does spin and bounce. And Root has got a bit lucky there. That could have gone anywhere. That's what I'm talking about. And uh, as, as he looked to play it, it gloved him, ricocheted out to the leg side, but didn't carry to the short leg fielder. Yeah, and oh, 
some some batters though some batters would be committed on the front foot there and it's the old punch of the glove straight to short leg whereas Root stood back he's yes got it to spit and got it to bounce but he still had that split second more time to make a decision or to try and make a decision so the processes are good yeah he's batting beautifully here he's yeah. got to 12 the only trail by 14 came in yeah. under all sorts of pressure all sorts of pressure and he was the smiley joe root that walked out to bat 19 for two england uh, he'd be smiley after his bowling figures you might just have joined us five for eight joe root five for eight India all out for 145. And I've just had a sip of that coffee you've brought up from the market. I don't think I'm sleeping for three days. <laughs> it's a Col beauty. Colombian. It's a proper artisan. So that's why I'm excused. I, 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 we won't over. Oh. We won't overanalyze this in case um, my employees think that I'm skipping off five minutes of work. And it's also a reduction. Neil no Manfold's name right hand is no shaking. No name brand. I tell you it what, if I prepared coffee like this, my name would be all over it. It's good, isn't it? It oh. tastes great, but it is. this is stronger than yesterday's. How's Butch? He's got it neat. Butch is, he would have it neat, wouldn't he? I mean, it's just what Butch is. Um, Akshay Patel again now to Sibley, who stands on the, well, sort of on the back foot, I suppose. Big Dom Sibley there and works at leg side. No Sibley, ha Sibley has uh, height, which means he's got reach, which actually sometimes plays into your favour. So that normal length that Akshay will be bowling, Sibley's actually right out there to smother it. And that's what he's been doing so far. He's been right out to smother the bounce. I was going to ask you about that, so I'm glad you've answered it. That's nicely played. There we go, again. No spin, yeah. Forward defence, no run. Yeah, again, he gets out there, really smothers it. So that, that, that length that did for Bairstow in particular... Sibley's right out there, difference in height. I think he's the same difference, height as you, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, different reach. Mm. The ability to get right out. I'm sure again. Oh. oh dear, that's out. Is it? Yeah, I thought it was. I didn't like it. It's a horrible, horrible mow across the line that doesn't make sense in the pattern of his play so far. LBW is the appeal. It's hard to imagine this isn't going to be out because it's hit him so full. The, it's almost on the half volley. It's hit low on his pad. I, I think it's either, I think it's a catch, Mark. Oh. I think R Richard Punt's gone for the catch. It was a horrible mo across the line. Horror, horror, horror. And it's just oh. going to be about whether he hit it or not. Oh, I'm so sorry. You're quite right. It, and wow, the coffee is working. Um, <laughs> So it is a catch, and Rishabh Pant was just so sure. His celebration was so immediate. That's often the thing when you watch these cricketers from afar, is how the, their immediate reaction, not their delayed reaction. The delayed reaction gives time for thought and impression. Immediate reaction is instinctive. Oh, dear. Yeah. You can hear the crowd. <laughs> and 40,000 people. I think you're hearing the story loud and clear. Anil, stay with the original decision. You are on screen. Give out, please. A strange shot. Yeah. A very strange shot. He right. just smothered the bowling so well the previous couple of deliveries. And then just a monumental hoik across the line. Ouch. Well, it's an idea of the discipline needed to play these innings against spin and how quickly your mind becomes cluttered by defending against it and feeling you're going nowhere. But of course he was doing a good job. He made seven from 25 balls, but he was taking the sting out of India's enthusiasm. Or the energy maybe out of India's enthusiasm, I should say. Anyway, what a blow for England. Remember that there was an advantage for 33 in the first innings for the Indians and England are now 19 for three. So they're minus 14 for three. What a pity. Extraordinary sight of Rory Burns out in the middle with his hair up. It's pinned. It's not a good look. Pink glasses? Yeah, it's not a good look. <laughs> and, I, and I like the look in general. I like his long hair and the goatee and all that. And I like Rory and all the stuff, but that's not a good look. Well, I think the match is walking to the crease right now. I think the one guy who could take the game away from India if he was out there for an hour, probably doesn't need much more than that, make 50 quickly, is Ben Stokes. I think if he looks to score with the spin, and I think if he's brave to look to hit long and hard, Joe Root can certainly hang on with him at the other end, so there's the anchor. 
But this is a mighty challenge for Stokes. He hasn't found it easy since the first innings of the first test when he made 80 odd, and of course he had Root as the anchor then. I think this is really hard. I think this is yeah. incredibly hard. You've got a left arm spinner bowling out into the rough. There's now a deep cow corner, there's a deep square leg, there's a long on in position. But that doesn't matter. There's a short leg, a leg slip, and a slip. So attacking both edges. But if Ben Stokes thinks that he can just plant one into the crowd, he's going to have to do it well. Yeah. Spin, bounce. No. And he's off the mark with a nice turn off his hip. It was a diving leg slip fielder. But he wasn't able to stop it. So Stokes is immediately away with a couple. And England are now just 12 behind. Yeah, and I've always thought that it's actually quite difficult playing with Alistair Cook and Andrew Strauss, the top of the order, and in the second innings in particular, spinners bowling into the rough. We saw the ball that Shane Warne used to bowl around the wicket, the one that he knocked Andrew Strauss over with. Huge spin. Big spin from around Stoke, the wicket. Stokes is back and defends on the back foot very comfortably. Nice, comfortable, but no great spin yet. I'm still trying to work out Dom Sibley's thinking and I, and I think it just was a nice clear summary of the sort of mind games you have to deal with out there now Stokes has worked it to mid-wicket just past the man at short mid-wicket out to the man at deep mid-wicket a single for him end of the ninth over of this innings 22 for three England 11 behind Root has 12 Stokes has three and two of England's finest cricketers ever are at the crease in a crucial situation and it's also just a symptom of the inability to rotate strike we saw when Rohit Sharma and Virat Kohli were batting last night and Leach was bowling Rohit Sharma and Kohli were able to hit sweeper on the boundary and rotate strike hit mid off run it quick run a single you get bogged down against spinners it plays on all sorts of your emotion you want to rotate strike everybody tells you you should be rotating strike you know that rotation of strike is the way to play is the way to get Joe Root onto strike but if you just don't have that in your armory it can make you play the shots that uh, Dom Sibley's just played you're listening to commentary of the third test between England and uh, India Talksport 2 with the Times and the Sunday Times writing with edge of course there as Stokes goes forward worth reading Michael Atherton tomorrow morning for sure um, and Alistair at the weekend uh, Alistair Cook uh, Sir Alistair I should say no run there for um, Ben Stokes this is uh, an interesting challenge for him against R. Ashwin who generally has had the better of him off spin a little Achilles heel maybe for Stokes who works that slightly short ball into the leg side and we'll get a couple more as Ishant Sharma jogs round I don't suppose Ishant will have much work in his innings though he made useful runs with the bat today yes this uh, commentary is now coming with the backing of uh, the times and sunday times try it for a month it's free times.co.uk slash cricket subscription automatically renews unless cancelled terms and conditions apply stokes goes for that slog sweep against ashwin but the ball dips on him bounces spins beats him going against the spin hitting into the spin You've got to get the length of the ball right if you're going to do that. Marvellous big game player. Played some of the innings of our lives, this man. He's on strike to Ashwin. He goes back and defends. It keeps low. He does well to keep it out. Drops the bat down on the ball. Watches it closely. That's the key. Doesn't panic. And kept it out. The pink ball rotating through the air. Seam with many revs upon it now he's beaten by a lovely spinner a thick outside edge into the gully doesn't carry to Virat Kohli who sprawls forward to try to funnel it up but can't these are the decisions that you've got to make as a batter you think into yourself that one of these has got my name on it because he's played a perfectly perfect technique to a forward delivery that's just spun them oh now he goes for reverse sweep they ask for LBW um, Barman and says no it must have hit him outside the line of off stump has it so do they review in India are they reviewing what are they doing Kohli's waiting talking and seems to be resigned to the fact there's no need to review that it hit him outside the line of off stump and there is no review by India so that's okay for for Ben Stokes there's risk that in the close. shot though that, that was, was close, close. Yeah. I'm telling you that was close I agree 24 for three the score 
Um, KP can continue with the how close conversation and Mark Butcher will then follow. Very, very close, I think. Incredibly close. It was Ben Stokes. He was reverse sweeping. He tried the big hoik. The three men on the boundary on the leg side. He then played the most perfect defensive shot that just landed in front of second slip. Vera Kohli almost caught it on the bounce. And then the next ball, it was a very audacious reverse sweep, to which there was a, an appeal, a big appeal. Single to uh, the first ball of Axar's over. His figures are now three for ten. Ben Stokes going for the uh, reverse sweep simply because he's trying to play with the spin from uh, the bowling of Ashwin. What an extraordinary test match career so far for Aksar Patel. 13 wickets for 148 since making his debut. Not quite a couple of weeks ago in Chennai. Back goes uh, Stokes this time. Ben Stokes has, has looked at a shadow of himself uh, since the first test in Chennai. Has uh, shook his head, been shaking his head, has been sort of looking and feeling a little bit sorry for himself. Is this a situation as he's forward and uh, drives, drills the ball at Coley at short mid wicket, no run, 25 for three? Is this the innings and the situation where we see uh, the real Ben Stokes stand up? Again, half and half, not quite able to get forward to that flighted delivery from Axar, who seems to be able to change the pace and the, uh, the flight of the ball with no discernible change in action. England still eight runs behind. Axar flatter this time, Stokes on the back foot, works it uh, between short leg and uh, leg slip down to deep backward square and will retain the strike. 11 overs gone. England seven behind, scores 26 for three. He played that beautifully, real good over. Forward when the ball was real full and he was back when it was even full, but it was slower through the air. He played that nicely to Ben Stokes and that's the calmness that Stokes and Root need to now sort of try and enable the team to get some sort of level of authority into this game. They're seven runs behind still. It's a big partnership, a real big partnership, this one. Is there any merit in the idea that, that where possible, Root takes the off spinner and as Ashwin is in, Ashwin has uh, Ben Stokes' wicket 10 times in Test Match Cricket. And uh, yeah, Root takes Ashwin and Stokes takes Axar. Any, any reason to try and engineer that as uh, Ashwin is in once more? Oh, that ball turns viciously. Brilliant take from Rishabh Pant. Ball pitching middle and leg. Stokes comes half forward and it spins violently. Probably about a foot and a half and Pant takes it just below shoulder height. I think Root's playing both the left arm spinner and the right arm spinner really, really well. He really is. He's playing beautifully. He's playing so nicely. I was thinking about more, more in terms of protecting Stokes from Ashwin. Sure, sure. No, I, I completely get it. But I reckon Akshar could get him as well. It's spinning that much. It's bouncing that much. Ashwin in once more. Oh, and that Stokes plays away from his body that time. Huge gap between bat and pad. But that ball turns and uh, <laughs> makes contact with the, uh, the middle of Ben Stokes' back. Perhaps more by luck than judgment. And there is no run. Sweeps log for Ben Stokes, he smashed it, nailed it. It's uh, muscled rather than timed. It didn't come out of the middle of the bat, but it didn't matter. And that has gone away for a valuable boundary. The lead now is just three. Yeah, very valuable boundary. He's trying to assert his authority here on the bowler by saying, if you do toss it up, I'm gonna have a go. It's the way that I play, it's what I do. And I like to own the space in which I'm batting. I don't want you, Ravi Chandran Ashwin, to own my space. Flighted. It's straight up in the air off the top edge. Attempted sweep slog. It evades the man running back. Axar Patel. Goodness me. Stokes scampers back for a couple. Heart in the mouth moment for England fans. 
ball was uh, just went up out of Ashwin's hand. You can see it from behind the bowl where we're looking on the television. But Stokes was foxed and it came straight off the top edge. Axar agonisingly couldn't get near enough as he ran back from mid-wicket. And that's why it's so difficult. People say, go out there and have a hack. Or go out there and be positive. Or go out there and assert some sort of a, a voice of authority on the game. Well, unfortunately, on a wicket like we've seen, 23 wickets in the first, what, five sessions or six sessions of this test match, it takes luck, and that's all it takes. It takes being dropped four or five times to get a real big score if you're going to go and play that way. I don't think there's anyone good enough to do it. And that's from uh, Kevin Peterson, who was good enough on many occasions at run down to uh, backward point from Joe Root off the back foot in the first ball of the next Axar over and there's no run remember in innings on a, on a pitch that India complained vociferously about as uh, Axar is in and Root this time on the front foot drives the ball crisply to extra cover and there's no run it's against Australia in Pune 2018 shocker pitch massively underprepared as Axar's in once more Root again on the back foot and uh, Again, finds the man at backward point and there's no run. And the difference between the two sides, Steve O'Keefe took 12 wickets, I think, in the test match. Left arm spinner, who's disappeared without a trace for Australia. And Zaxar is in again. Root thinks about sweeping. He got low and the bat went up and out towards the offside. But then he changed his mind and was able to guide it off the front foot into the cover uh, and pick up a single. Steve Smith played one of the best innings I've ever seen by anybody anywhere on this absolute shocker in Pune to make a hundred was a difference between the two sides India were desperately unhappy with the groundsman that they should come upon a surface like that at home when they have home advantage already against Australia whose spin bowlers were not as adept as theirs sweep from uh, Ben Stokes and he will pick up a single this is good from England and the cries you know for the head of the groundsman etc were, were loud and from there on in India played the series on uh, pretty flat surfaces and, and won the series 2-1 against Australia. But that's the last time I can remember seeing two surfaces like the one we saw in Chennai and this one here, where the ball has ragged square from and gone through the surface from first ball. XR in again and Root has a drive, at a, a widish flighted delivery and it turns past the bat, clips the, uh, the pad perhaps of Rishabh Pant Rahani takes a brilliant catch at slip, but the ball hit nothing apart from Pant's pad on the way through. 34 for 3 from 13. England lead by 1. The one thing I will say is that it's home ground advantage. And if you think you can beat the opposition by preparing wickets like this, it's something that you do. When we played against India, believe me, they weren't just flat roads. I remember batting on a, in a test match in, at Lords. There was about 20 not out of about 100 deliveries on day one. The grass on that wicket, there were some balls that were seeming more than they're spinning it on this wicket. And those are the wickets that were prepared. Underprepared maybe, a lo left a load of grass on them, but it's home ground advantage. Which, which, as this is beautifully played off the back foot by Ben Stokes, back foot through mid wicket, a little punch and that's found the boundary as well. Runs are just starting to uh, come, I wouldn't say at a flood, at a trickle here for England. The lead is now five. And a couple of boundaries from Ben Stokes, and again, you can just see Stokes' shoulders just drop a little bit. The tension start to perhaps leave his body as he starts to find a, an ounce of fluency. Well, and, and I agree with you. I mean, home advantage, absolutely. But then you can't complain when you come unstuck when you've uh, when you prepared a pitch as India did in Pune. Reverse sweep. Oh, that's found the boundary as well. Stokes is uh, finding his mojo and importantly for England finding the boundary absolutely is finding the boundary now that's boundary boundary the lead is now nine we saw what happened this morning we saw how India batted on this and I remember being on, on Twitter before that test match and I thought brave wicket brave to bank on winning the toss it's a brave wicket big spin and a swing and a miss Stokes tries to go through extra cover again it ricochets off Rishabh Pant and lands in the hand of a second slip and there is no run England lead by nine Ashwin in once more and uh, Stokes is forward and finds the middle of the bat in defence but I think that India feel more comfortable on a wicket like this against England 
I just think that they do. I think that they think that this is the way to beat England. In the air, through gully. Coley dives and uh, misses. And Stokes comes back for a second. There's a fumble uh, out there. The man has been sort of back. That's uh, Washington Sundar, who hasn't had a bowl just yet. Uh, the man was back for the reverse sweep. Ben Stokes took the opportunity to put him under a bit of pressure and came back for two. Lead now is 11, and then 44 for three. And just as we're talking about uh, surfaces, we're going to get an injury in point of view as Akash Chopra awaits to uh, give his opinion. Ball flashes past the outside edge of uh, Ben Stokes' bat. Russo Pan pouches it safely on this occasion. And that's the end of the 14th over England. 44 for three. Root is uh, 14 and Ben Stokes is 23 from uh, 27 deliveries. Akash, are you there? Yes, yes I am here. I'm definitely here. So what are you seeing? What, are, what, what have you made of uh, <laughs> this morning's <laughs> extraordinary, <laughs> extraordinary cricket? Absolutely extraordinary. Didn't expect it to turn uh, the game to actually move so rapidly. It has, of course, uh, a slender lead. Once again, I thought that uh, England was actually in uh, in front because uh, chasing 125 on this surface in the, in the fourth innings is not going to be easy. But then India has struck quite nicely. Three wickets for Akshar Patel. Once again, you'll find that the straight ball is uh, causing more damage than the ones that are turning away. So, it's, uh, it's incredible how uh, on a turning pitch, so many wickets have fallen on uh, the balls that have just stayed straight. Nothing else. Akash, it's KP. How are you, buddy? I'm very good, uh, mate. How are you? Good. I heard you yesterday. You said England got their team more right than India. Are you still going with that? <laughs> See, uh, you pick Dom Best and you don't get control. See, my problem is that you pick people who will eventually give you some amount of control. Dom Best, you didn't play him when the, you had a grand turner in Chennai. Second test match. So, if uh, that's the kind of confidence you have in a guy, you might as well go with a fast bowler. At least uh, bowl well in the under lights uh, and there will be a lot of due, which there is to be honest. Root able to get on the back foot once again. He knocks it uh, with a straight bat out to deep mid wicket and comes back for a second. England captain moves on to 16. If you're just joining us, um, India were bowled out for 145, having started the day on 99 for three. Joe Root picked up five for eight. As Aksar is in, he hits Joe Root on the back foot. Joe Root is on the back foot. You could see off and middle stumps. The ball didn't turn. Perhaps uh, it's going down the leg side, but Joe Root was a long, long way back there. It looks as though Kohli is not interested, though the Indian captain has, has gone upstairs for for ones that I would call more questionable than that. But uh, play continues. Aksar in once again to Root, who's forward and plays it quite nicely onto the offside. One thing I will say, Akash, about the, 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 the straight ball being more dangerous than the turning one. I mean, it, that is a legacy, I think, of... Uh, of DRS, of uh, players, as Aksar's in once more, <laughs> inside edge, oh was there an inside edge, Anil Chowdhury puts the finger up, there wasn't really an appeal from India, it was more of a chuckle from Rishabh Pant behind the stumps, I think now, he thinks it's dead, I think he thinks he's hit pad first and then, then the inside edge, I mean it was a quick delivery, he's got to review Aksar. it, he has to review it, review it Joe Root, yes he's reviewed it, he has to, he's the best player in both teams playing spin, he has to review it and he's reviewed it. Well, what a moment. Third up by to director, play review for LBW, original decision is out. Root looks it's nervous. A delivery, it's been yeah, <laughs> very. <laughs> Which is a cause for concern. Yeah, roll it nice and Rather like a steak when Darren Goff enters the room. Nervous as anything. Roll it, roll it pad, roll pad first, pad first. Or was it? Oh, yeah. is it? Or was it? Live, I thought it was a, a genuine squeeze. Inside edge on the pad. Roll it nicely. Nicely. Roll it. Roll it. Well, from the evidence that we are seeing at the moment, I, I don't think that you can oh. tell which was first, pad or bat, or inside edge. So what does it do? To stick with the umpire's decision because you haven't got enough evidence well, to overturn I, I it? I guess so. I guess so. I mean, I cannot tell you, having watched that super slow motion, whether or not it was pad or bat first. The umpire on <sighs> the field has given it out. That's 50-50, isn't it? That's so close. Yeah, please. 
That's so close. I mean, it, it would be so easy to have kept your hand in your pocket. Yeah, Again, I watching it live, I thought inside edge straight away. So that looks like pad, and there's a and, and, and there's a line, the and then there's bat. Want to check the distance between the bat and the bat? This is very, very difficult, and because it's so difficult, I think we're going to end up staying with the umpire's decision here. There could be a millimetre in it. A millimetre. It's a tad back a distance. Tad, tad back tad. Goodness, this is tough. And it's such a big wicket. It's Joe Root. It's the game. Well, I'm not a gambling man, KP, but I'm going with yeah, staying with the umpire's please. decision here. Yeah, can we go to ultra H, please? My word. <laughs> My word, Butch. Akash, yeah, how are you seeing it? <laughs> uh, it's, uh, there's not enough evidence to overturn uh, the on-field umpire's decision. Yeah. If Can it's not conclusive, you you'll stay with the on-field umpire. Yeah, that's yes, why I see it as well. Between, uh, yeah. Yeah, front that's front what front it front is, front. I guess. Oh, this I mean, is it's, tough. it's a massive call from the on-field umpire to give it out in the first place. But, but Joe, Ritz, but, but Joe Ritz more confident now, isn't he? See, there's no way he can give that out. But he was given it. But he's given it out. Yes. yes. That is the, the key thing, Don't is that the on-field umpire forward. live gave forward. it out. Yeah. Thank you. If he'd have kept his hand in his pocket, yeah. if he'd been Dickie Bird and gone, oh, I'm not too sure, then Maybe the England forward. captain would be fine. You see, there's a replay that's playing now that looks like it actually did hit the pad first. But it's interesting. Joe Root spent a lot of time yes, with the match referee the last night saying the that they wanted to go through the process and look at all the angles. Now, this might be that, <laughs> that conversation is helping <laughs> yeah. him now yeah. because we're looking there, at other there. angles that are perhaps this, the camera the is perhaps is wide of mid off and it looks as though it could have hit screen, the bat please. first. It's coming, it's coming. Anil, you have to reverse your decision. Oh, You're on my screen. Goodness. Oh my goodness me, what a moment wow. in the game. The 40-odd thousand in the Narendra Modi Stadium don't like it. Virat Kohli, unsurprisingly, doesn't like it. But that, oh goodness me. I, I think if there is an error here, and I'm choosing my words very carefully, if there is an error here, it was in the on-field umpire giving this one out live. Because my feeling live, watching it admittedly, from a long way away but on a television screen was that there was bat involved in this and you could not be sure even with all of the replays we've seen could not be sure which was first it was such a tight squeeze between the inside edge and the pad but having given it out on the field I'm not sure that I've seen anything Yay! that should have reversed that next ball flashes past the outside edge of Joe Roots but that's a moment that's a huge moment Darren Goff has just joined me well, I even walk out of the commentary room, I have to go watch it on TV and listen to you guys commentate. Come on, boys. It's, it's unbelievable, isn't it? It's a fantastic test match, a massive, massive moment there. Joe Root. Uh. Root, for, Root forward and uh, trying to get that pad back way out in front of the pad on this occasion. Defends into the offside. That is a huge, huge moment Whoops. in this uh, extraordinarily <laughs> quick in fast forward test match so many of us in this room right um and we all kind of came to a different conclusion didn't we really so i think that kind of tells you it was an hard one to give out we didn't know whether it was pad first bat then pad again or or bat then pad even joe root wasn't sure you know you no. could see when it it was he was stokes who told him to review it yeah absolutely. joe root was on his way which, which is kind of why which is why having given it out on the field i'm surprised that they've overturned it i'm really surprised I, I think the error, if, if there was one, the error was in giving it out on the field. Ashwin into uh, Ben Stokes, it turns him around, turns him into an S, spins and hits him on the back leg, but turns so much that it would have missed off stump. I'm a bit breathless here, I think it's probably time for a, a change, let's get uh, Neil Manthorpe in. What a game is. Hang on, I haven't got my breath back yet. Well, 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 it's a uh, new over begins from uh, R Ashwin. <laughs> who is none for 31. Me and you back again. That was an exciting <laughs> last half in our stint we did manners. Yeah, well, that, listen, it's, it's been, um, like I said, we can talk about the pitch all day long, but taking that out of it, it's been an exciting test match so far. Yes, we're not even a day and a half through the game yet, but oh, 
back and forth this test match is going. Here's Ashwin again, oh, forward yeah, comes Root. Yeah. Uh, Stokes scrambled a single off the previous uh, delivery. Thank you, Farden, I forgot to mention that. But uh, Joe Root forward playing uh, defensively. Yeah, it was. Uh, here's Ashwin once Yay! more, and uh, Root comes forward again. He's struck on the pad. We we're actually just seeing a replay um, in real time of uh, Joe Root being told by Ben Stokes to review it. Well, he got to. He's your best player. That's yeah. what kept saying he had to. Exactly. Here is Ashwin again yeah, around the wicket. Oh, spit, bounce, and that one leapt up at Joe Root. Manages to play it with soft hands, keep it down. Yeah, Joe thought he was gone. You, you could tell with his facial expressions and, and, and Ben wasn't sure. He said, you've got to review it, basically. Got to. Here's uh, Ashwin once more and uh, it's a reverse sweep and it's very well played by Joe Root. Hits it down towards deep, but what becomes deep back with square leg. I thought it was pad, bat, pad. I thought it <laughs> just came off the pad, onto the inside edge and then back onto the pad. Anyway, what would I know? Yes, uh, Jared? Uh, Graham Swan is saying on the TV coverage apparently that uh, Joe Root said he didn't hit it and I've just had a look at the replay it does look like that's what Joe Root is telling Ben Stokes I don't think I hit that so very interesting yeah he, he thought he was out absolutely all day long you could just tell Joe thought he was a goner he wasn't going to review that at all it was Ben Stokes that definitely persuaded him to do it and he, and he had to he's, he's such a big player for England um, <laughs> I say he's had a good test match so far hasn't he he's already got five for eight yeah <laughs> Exactly. Five for eight with the ball. Here's uh, Aksha Patel once more, and it's chopped away. A little bit of width outside the off stump. Did you, um, Akash, did you did you hear all that? Did you hear that Joe Root? <laughs> I, I did. Yes, I, I, I've, been, I've been, of course, listening to it. Of a uh, fairly close call. Joe Root wasn't confident enough. But there was something for all of us to actually learn here. Uh, Ideally, when you're playing spin in these conditions, uh, especially against Akshar Patel, there should not be a squeeze. Bat should be ahead of the pad. So that is where things are going wrong because straight balls will get you out when you're... Good point, good point. Sweep shot from Ben Stokes, LBW appeal, struck him outside the line of off stump by a long way. Because when, when straight balls are troubling you, the bat has to be in front of the pad and not besides the pad. And that's where uh, the problem is. Akshar Patel once more, Stokes plays a quicker one defensively from the crease, pushing it out on uh, the offside. Tell you what is interesting, Akash, is that uh, the, the theory that there has to be sufficient evidence to overturn an appeal, if there isn't, then it stays with the on-field decision. Here is Akshar, and uh, that is a sweep shot down towards deep backward square leg, and they go through for a single. Chedhadi Shamshuddin, the third umpire, may find himself in a minority if he felt that there was sufficient evidence to overturn that because I think most people would have been confused that's that's the point and I think uh, that also tells us that uh, no matter how much we rely on the technology it's in the end the interpretation by humans <laughs> yes indeed Akshar Patel ah! into Joe Root another ooh and an ah from Rishabh Pant as it struck him probably outside the line of our stump maybe some inside edge as well it's just worth remembering that uh, although England feel a couple of decisions marginal decisions may not have gone their way that is a marginal decision which has very very much gone their way here is Akshar once more and uh, steer off the open face of the bat to backward point and uh, there's no root Joe Root has 18, Ben Stokes has 25. I think overall the quality of the umpiring has been, been pretty good to, to very good. Uh, I think the first two test matches I thought they were excellent. Um, the umpires, I think this one, it tends to be when we go upstairs, doesn't it? I think that's where all the, the arguments have been, but Akash has got it right. I mean, it, at the end of it, there's an umpire making a decision downstairs and it goes to another umpire upstairs who then makes a human decision by watching TV. So that's what it comes down to. Come on, Ash. 17 overs bowled, all of them by uh, Akshar Patel and R. Oh. Ashwin. Swan strikes Ben Stokes on the pads. How long can they carry on, Akash? Are we going to see, um, <laughs> are we gonna see any seam? So there, is, there, is, there is Washington Sundar who hasn't opened his arms at all in this test match. He's another spinner. I thought he was playing as a number seven batsman. <laughs> Here's Ashwin again. <laughs> Stokes comes forward, struck on the pad. Massive appeal for an empty ball. Up goes the finger. Ben Stokes pushing forward. 
and this time it's Joe Root's decision on behalf of his vice captain. What will Joe Root say? Ben Stokes is saying, I think I'm dead, I think I'm gone. He doesn't seem to want to review it, and Joe Root says, You are going to review No, he doesn't. He's, he's off. Ben Stokes knows he's gone. Yeah. The vice captain has gone. When he came to the crease, you heard Mark Nicholas say, This could be the game. Look. I actually think he ran out of time there. I think he was thinking about it. Joe Root would wanted him to, to do it. The benefit out. It could have been going down. These two are the best two players in the England side. If there's any doubt, you've got to review it. There's no point saving it for Ben Folks when he comes in. And Joffrey Archer, you've got to be using it for Stokes and Root. Because that is a massive, massive wicket. This was a massive partnership for England. It's a good knock from Ben Stokes. 25, but is it enough? England now 50 for 4 here on TalkSport 2 and that could be a massive moment I'd love to see a replay of that how many times we will how many times do you reckon in your career you've said that's a really good knock of 25 by a test match number 5 well it is if you look at the people I know, the I know. Players, the question is how often do you think you've well, said exactly. that exactly <laughs> it's a great 25 and we shouldn't be it's saying it should 25. we we shouldn't be saying it in a test match oh, on day no. 2 we shouldn't be saying it but we are it's exciting uh, but it was a good 25 of just 34 deliveries. It took it into Ashwin a little bit. But at the end of it, we've got a lead of 17 runs. And we've got six wickets left. And Ollie Pope comes to the crease. So it'll be interesting because Ollie likes to be positive. He likes to use his feet, Ollie Pope. He likes to reverse sweep and sweep. Again, I think he'll want to play his natural game. He didn't in the first innings. He got stuck on the crease, didn't he? Played across one. Got bowled from round the wicket. So it'll be interesting. I think he'll try and be busy at the crease. But it's difficult. You've got two quality bowlers bowling at you. I, I mean, I, I don't know if Akash is still with us. I was asking the question. Uh, Akash, I, I, mean, I, I mean, I, I just... Uh, Akshar and, and Ashwin, you, you just... I mean, you're not going to get the ball out of their hands, are you? I mean, I'm, you, you were talking about the other options, but these two will just bowl 20 overs each if they can. Uh, they can, they can, because uh, Akshar has played enough for first-class cricket to bowl long spells. He knows this ground. Uh, he's actually been grinding it out for the last 10-12 years in first-class cricket. Uh, so he's uh, used to bowling these long spells. Uh, of course, uh, Ravi Chandran Ashwin. We all know that he's been able to do this uh, for for a number of years now at the highest level. Uh, so yes, it will take some uh, uh, some explaining, some cajoling from the captain to take the ball out of their hands. But then uh, when both of them are picking wickets, why would you want to do that any which way? So it is spin to win. Uh, and I've been listening to it, yes, on day two, second session, uh, it should not actually be so difficult to bat and a uh, wicket shouldn't be falling as if like in every second over. Uh, but then uh, this is this is exciting uh, as much as, and I, and I keep reiterating that, uh, as much as it is about the pitch, the turn, the lack of turn and whatever else, it also is an indication of uh, the quality of batting from both sides. Uh, yes, there is spin, yes, there is bounce, but uh, trust me, that we saw in the second test match at Chennai, uh, that was a proper turner. This pitch, uh, in India at least, I can, uh, uh, for Vivius Lakshman, I can speak for Gautam Gambhir, I can speak for a lot of people who are just sitting and uh, broadcasting with us. Everybody is of the same opinion that this is a much better pitch than what the scorecards uh, suggest. Uh, and uh, it's just the ghost of the past, maybe. What happened in Chennai? They want everyone, they're expecting every ball to turn and uh, they, they just aren't. And uh, the quality of uh, batting, against spin well uh, that's been found wanting I, I don't think those players you've just mentioned would be saying that if they were out there batting because it's unacceptable <laughs> spin I'm, I'm afraid I think it's like I said a second session of day two to be turning and bouncing the way it is it's I agree with not that both teams have not played it as well as they should Joe Root shouldn't be getting uh, five for eight but there's a reason he's got five for eight Akash I mean 6.2 overs no, five I for eight Joe Root a part time spinner no, I, I'm with you, but uh, you know, uh, just 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 go back to the last test match, puff of dust from ball one. That was like a proper proper two day pitch, and it actually lasted three days. Or <laughs> uh, this is yes, it's a it's a it's a decent pitch. I'd say yes, it's a turner, but not as bad. Ashwin in outside the off stump, Oli Pope pushing at that one, and uh, he's beaten. It's not taken cleanly by Rishabh Pant. It's it's funny, isn't it? I mean, it's uh, you know we often say all all the batsman wants is is predictable bounce. We just want to know that it's going to bounce, going to behave. And it sounds almost like all we want here is predictable spin. We don't want those going straight on. Oh, and then another one from Ashwin goes past the outside edge and just misses the off stump. 
Ollie Pope this time not sure whether to play forward or back well that was nearly action replay from the first innings round the wicket playing across it towards the leg side straight on with the arm and he had his off ball knocked out didn't he in the first innings mm. nearly exactly action replay England 50 for 4 leading by 17 <laughs> down the wicket comes Pope now taking on the pad as he defends out on the leg side 50 for 4 70. But Akash, it's precisely because, well, he's, he's just left us, but I said this before, I think it's precisely because the ball is turning big that the straight honour becomes so much of a problem. It's taken more wickets than any that have turned. Reverse sweep now from Ollie Pope, first and uh, last delivery of the over, and he's got a top edge on it, but there's no one down there. Ishan Sharma runs down towards what becomes fine leg to retrieve the ball, but uh, four runs, Ollie Pope, and that's confirmation of exactly what Darren Goff said he's gonna, not going to die in the hole he's going to make sure that he makes sure that he has an opportunity to score runs and he's off the mark with a reverse sweep for four albeit off the top edge 18 overs gone England 54 for four effectively 21 for four <laughs> yeah he's busy at the crease Ollie Pope and, and that's one thing you can see he's got the confidence to try and play these shots originally picked for Surrey in T20 cricket you all have to remember this kid can play and he likes to be aggressive with the bat, he likes to keep the scoreboard ticking along, and he's going to find a way to play. But he's either coming down the wicket, which he likes to do, and playing towards mid-wicket, or he's going to sweep and reverse sweep. And we've already seen it as soon as he comes to the crease, he gets off the mark with a reverse hit. Can you imagine that 10 years ago? 15 years ago, perhaps. <laughs> Can no, you imagine? No. And I've got quite a good imagination. Here's Akshar Patel once more, and it's played away defensively by uh, Joe Root. Just a reminder that this commentary on the third test between India and England here on TalkSport 2 is brought to you with uh, the compliments of the Times and the Sunday Times. Cricket correspondence led by the incomparable former England captain Mike Averton in the Times and uh, Sir Alistair Cook in the Sunday Times. Akshar again to uh, Joe Root, who shapes to play a slog sweep and uh, it's very full it's almost half volley in the end he has to improvise and somehow sort of shovel his full length delivery through mid wicket for a single and he moves on to 19 off 44 balls 55 for four England in their second innings we've had 24 wickets <laughs> before see before the in the in the first five sessions of this test match 24 wickets Ollie Pope Averaging 34 in his fledgling test career, and I'm sure it'll end a lot higher than that. That's another magnificent delivery from Akshar, who is so accustomed to beating the bat now that he's become reactionless when it goes past the edge. It is, it's the height as well, I think that plays a massive part in this. And you look at Joe Root, Joe Root's quite tall as well, you know, and he was a handful when he was bowling. Pushed away on the back foot this time as uh, Ollie Pope comes forward, and then quickly picking up the length, retreats into his crease and pushes it down to long on or mid on for a single yeah it's, it's just surprising isn't that because uh, Joe Root uh, is he was always little Joe you know little cheeky chappy little Joe. but actually when you meet him he's quite a he's tall physical presence yeah, he's a tall boy here is uh, a shot again and another appeal for leg before wicket up goes the finger Joe Root been given again this time I don't think he, he's going to get away with it. He got lucky, he was reprieved on 16, but Akshar has his man. The England captain's on his way, Joe Root's gone. Akshar Patel with 17 wickets in the last two test matches and the left arm spinner's not done yet. England are 56 for five. Guess what boys, it's another straight honour from Axar Patel, he's bowled beautifully this test match, that's nine wickets in the test, 56 for five England, really really struggling here, it was another flighted delivery from wide of the crease, just hit him flush on the pad, he was absolutely miles away from it uh, with his bat, just picked the wrong line, clever bowling from the left arm spinner, here dear Joe Root falls for 19 and it's 56 for 5 here on TalkSport 2. I've become mesmerised by Akshar Patel Goffey and I think it's because I, I was talking to, to Mark Butcher about this off air. I can't remember a spinner of, of any sort or kind with such an indistinguishable change of pace. There's nothing that changes and occasionally a ball comes out at 100 kilometers an hour. Manus, I, I said to Jared, right, if you're picking a team now, if you put me in charge and I was picking a team. World 11. No, a spinner I'd pick oh, oh. In, a, in, in a, I would be wanting him, yeah? Yeah. Obviously, if you can't get the wrist spinners, they've got, they've already gone. 
we, we know everybody would go for on the wrist but an orthodox normal spinner he'd be the first name I'd go for absolutely I think he's fantastic in all formats I think he'd be able to perform he's, he's, he's change of pace his natural variation and he can bat as well we haven't seen the best of him with a bat yet but I saw him in the IPL this kid can bat yeah. uh, he's a fantastic cricketer and we're talking about he's replacing Jadeja one of the best players India have got underrated player for many, much of the time Jadeja they find it hard to get him in all the time remember on the tour to England he actually came in and got an 100 didn't he but this kid's come in now can you imagine a side rather than Sunday you've got Patel Jadeja and Ashwin Whew. well I, I, good luck I, I, as I say Axel Patel has become so accustomed to taking wickets and beating the edge that he's done with celebrating I mean he's got Joe Root out there and he's uh, bored of he it was, <laughs> he's, got, he's just Phenomenal, phenomenal. Uh, there, you, there was a time, do you remember, Goffey, when a, if a spinner was described as having subtle variations and a nice change of pace, it was a polite euphemism for he doesn't spin it much. But this man, his variations are extraordinary. And uh, he's in the first delivery to new man Ben Fox is outside the off stump and he's able to leave it alone. But these are variations and changes of mm. pace that are so subtle as to be completely indistinguishable even on replay you yeah. can't see if he's doing anything differently it, and yet there's 15 kilometers difference between yeah. them. it's the angle he comes from uh, as well and he's not got a real eye action is he? it's quite a low action and his variation of pace he's got 10 wickets in the match actually I, uh, I, i'm not <laughs> i've done him a disservice you know what i mean he's, say he got now he got 10. He, he's been excellent and when you're out bowling our ashwin that that tells you something because you think how good a, uh, a cricketer Ashwin is and how hard he's been. He's been expensive in this innings, Ashwin. He's going for around four and over. But you look at Patel, how well he is bowled. And England batsmen are just finding it hard to play him, whether he comes over the wicket, round the wicket. It's been very hard. Is that someone banging in my ears or is it banging on the pitch out there? No, no, yeah. so, somebody is. Sounds, <laughs> sounds like they're having <laughs> yeah. throwdowns or it's in, in <laughs> somewhere near the, the uh, footholes. Yeah, no, it's the footholes. Yeah. There you go. There we go. He's, uh, it, that's one of the ground staff has got the old flat hammer out and he's banging down on uh, the bowler's footmarks. We ought to get Jared Kimber onto the uh, subject of two day test matches actually. Um, there, there haven't been very many. <laughs> Um, we're, we're you'll still get West Indies one, doesn't there? At Lords, um, twenty yeah. years ago. Here is Ashwin round the Ready. wicket, and that's pushed away by Ollie Pope. Square of the wicket on the offside, and uh, they scurry through for a couple of runs as Akshar does uh, the fielding. Well, the two Surrey boys together now, Pope and Folks. They'll, if any, well, they'll, they'll come up with some kind of a plan, won't they? I mean, they'll. They'll be, they'll, um, they'll want to be busy. They'll want to work hard, and they'll be saying, "Look, you know what? But you just get a lead of a hundred, and we're, we're, a, we're a chance." Well, they'll be saying, "We ain't got much to come, so it's down to us to Round the wicket again oh. comes Ashwin. There you go. Oh, Ollie Pope tries to mow it over deep mid wicket. He's took, took cleverly. He took a pace and a half down the pitch, and he made sure he got his pads in as a second line of defence because he missed it I think I think it's the right way for Oli Pop someone's got to take that risk and, and score a quick 30 or 40 it just gives you half a chance and I think Oli Pope is the the last door for that unless Archie can come in and, and connect with a few and I'm, I'm quite serious about uh, this possibility of this being a two day test match we, uh, we all sort of mentioned it half seriously at the beginning of the day here's Ashwin again and down the Wicket again comes Pope, this time just half a pace, gets to the pitch and uh, nudges it through mid-wicket and uh, they pick up another single. Pope is up to eight, folks has yet to score. You found any two-day test matches, Jared? Or are you still still beavering away in the record? Was that a two-day test at the West Indies? Was that two-day? I thought it was three, wasn't it, at Lord's? Was it? it might be two, you might be right. <laughs> I can't remember myself. Two-day? It is Mark Nicholas told us two-day. I played in that one. I'm sure it went to the Saturday. KP's <laughs> just reminding me that. <laughs> KP's just reminding me that there was a 45-minute test match in Antigua that, <laughs> <laughs> that was called off. Here's Ashwin again oh, around oh, the God. wicket, and it's uh, pushed <laughs> away by folks <laughs> towards mid-wicket. But but a two-day test match. I mean, there were some in the in the 1890s. <laughs> In the modern era, I mean, this this could happen here today. 
that's uh, given air by Ashwin. He doesn't toss too many up, but he does that one. It's a low full toss, and it's worked out towards deep mid-wicket. And uh, they go through for a single, and Folks is off the mark. England are leading by 27 runs. Wow. They are 60 for five, effectively 27 for five. And yes, we are genuinely saying that if England can get that lead from 27 to 100, they have a genuine chance of winning this test match. That's pushed out off the inside edge onto pads. It's wide of Shubman Gill at short leg. Every session is breathless. I'm off to catch mine again, and it's Mark Nicholas's turn. <laughs> Goffy, thanks, man. Is the the two-day test was Leeds. What was it? I played in that yeah, one. Yeah, two thousand. The, the the Lords Test was a ripper. That was Saturday afternoon. Yeah, I thought the, it was Saturday. Yeah. Halfway through, two thirds way through the third day, Dominic Cork in at the end. It was a thriller. But and you were out there, I think. Yeah, well, I was yeah, batting yeah. with him. And, yeah. But the two-day test at Leeds because we tried to make a program with you the next morning in the dressing room. Do you remember? And it was a Saturday morning. Yeah. And you weren't keen to come in. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Not at all. I was never making that one. <laughs> People that know me will will understand why. <coughs> 60 for 5, England. Lead of 27. <laughs> oh, goodness, what a day. Here's uh, Aksha Patel. And uh, nice forward defensive stroke from Ben Folks. But we've said that a few times and then seen either inside or outside edge beaten in general. I don't think Aksha has turned it as much in this innings as he did in the first innings, funnily enough. But he's still taken four wickets for 19. He bowls again and beats him with one that spins past the outside <laughs> edge. Lovely flight with that ball, I thought. I think that's what's done them so much. I think you look at Joe Root, the angle he came at to the left-handers, that wide of the crease, that slanting into the right-hander, then that vicious turn. So players have, have got that in their mind and then they end up playing the wrong line to the one that goes straight on. And the straight honour has got so many wickets in this test match. Bold and LBW. I've been amazed. Amazed on a Bunsen. Yes, uh, we're talking to KP during the dinner break about the art of playing spin, about the, the email he had from Raul Dravid on the subject, about the way the game's changed um, or been changed by DRS. All those things will be part of our dinner conversation. Should be fascinating. That's uh, hit the pad folks going forward it goes out on the leg side for no run but of course Joe Root is a good I'm going to ask him about Joe Root because you know you would perfectly reasonably ask why is Joe Root missing a straight ball when he plays a forward defensive shot if he's one of the best players in the world well we can explain that at lunchtime today nice shot by Ollie Pope they run do they they do good running pushes it does uh, um, Pope nicely I think it was Pope was it folks it was folks pushed it out just wide of mid off it means it brings Pope onto strike and uh, England well each run counts that's all I could say if England could somehow get 100 in front I think the game would be live absolutely it's hard to say actually what a good score is I mean we've, we've seen him when wickets go they go bang 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 well, forward defensive stroke from Ollie Pope and uh, that over from well, this over from Aksha Patel has just seen one ball really spin. Well, how they could do with just 20 minutes, half an hour of the best of Ollie Pope. He's got all the shots, all the shots back. There's a slip, there's a gully, there's a silly point. They wait. He bowls. Pope drives, but actually the ball was so full, he drove hit the, the, the toe of his bat into the ground and that meant he didn't time the stroke it's the end of the over folks two pope eight england 61 for five 28 in front again i mean defensively if you look at there the mind games it does what he brings into play um axel patel is that wider the crease and the angle he comes at Oli Pope there played a defensive shot where there was a massive gap between bat and pad because he's thinking about, am I quite there, not quite sure, that guess factor. And then if it turns and bounces, I need, me, I need my bat out there. It's got to be bat and pad as close together, surely, as you can be, without touching, you know what I mean? Bat out in front. That's how it used to be in the old days. It might be different now if you're looking to defend, but the way he defended there, if the one who would have gone straight on there, Mark, it would have been again. It would have been bang in front, LBW bang in front mm. so that really suggests that you've got to play for them not to be spin and accept yes. that, but you mustn't then go with the ball you've got to hold that line and let the ball Spot pass it back so that's Ben Folks playing forward the ball rolls out to short mid wicket he, he tugs on his pad there's no run he's got sun cream uh, underneath his eyes on his bottom lip he waits for Ashwin again he plays another forward defensive stroke pretty pretty comfortably I'd say held, it, held his position nicely sun cream on his nose and uh, he, he tugs on everything gets himself ready keepers tend to be a bit fidgety 
it's quite full and he drives it nicely just want to push drive really down towards uh, deepish mid on by no means all the way back and uh, Jasper Boomer does the fielding I don't suppose we'll see Boomer or, or Ishan Bowl uh, we might see Washington Sundar Bowl next who's an off spinner a bit of a sort of a not be unkind but but a down market Ashwin really Washington Sundar as uh, Ashwin bowls now there's an off break that doesn't spin really and it's nicely defended on the front foot by Oli Pope. I'm new you amazed Ashwin this innings. I mean you you would say it's the most easy pitch for him to bowl on, yet he's going at four and over. Yes, well England have played him much better. I think that's one point. He bowls up Oh, that's gone nice. He's gone to sweep it and it's bounced over everything. The only thing it could have done is caught Ollie Pope's glove. So the signal from the umpire is a four. So four to Pope, four to England, sixty-six for five, the lead now thirty-three. He definitely didn't enjoy that Ashwin did he knowing he'd gone for runs if it would have gone into Rishab's gloves and he would have been out he'd have been quite happy with that nowhere near it missed his gloves by an absolute country mile <laughs> not happy the bowler Ashwin nobody likes going for runs no. particularly when you think you've got a chance for a wicket off oh, oh. that was a crackerjack delivery landed it in the perfect spot and it held its line in other words it went the other way from Ollie Pope wow what a moment for Ashwin just as we thought he wasn't quite firing on all cylinders too oh I wish KP were on because I was going to ask him about Ollie Pope there again he's looked like getting out like that in this test match for some reason the angle of his bat the way he comes down to the ball that holds its line he's always looking with the angle he's coming he seems to scissor kick his own legs, doesn't he? And he's got bowled again for the second time in this test match. Ashwin has delivered after a disappointing start and England are in real trouble here. Real, real trouble. The tail has started 66 for six of 22 overs. This game is moving forward oh, well, very it's, quickly. Well, it's over today, there's no question about that. Um, we're going to bring in KP. I just tell our producer we need to turn it, turn I him. I think up I may be on now. Yes, because he's got. on. You're on, good man. Okay. I, I think it's the height at which Ali Pope stands, and 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 how, not short he is, but he's just not as tall as a Sibley or somebody like that. And so what he has to do in these circumstances is he has to get out to the pitch of the delivery. If you're a lot taller, and Joe Root, you guys have just been talking about Joe Root. Joe Root's actually quite a tall guy. So he's able to get out and lunge forward and get to the pitch. The good length he's able to get out to. He's also able to get back. Ollie Pope is shorter. He's got to use that. He's got to get quick on his feet. He's got to get nimble and he's got to get out to the pitch of the delivery. It's what he has to do or that will happen to him all day long. What, what about Doesn't his matter. bat shape? Doesn't matter. Bat shape, no interest in bat shape. Absolutely zero interest in bat shape. It's where you hit the ball and how you hit the ball. Not where your bat comes from. Look at Hashimamla. Hashim Amla almost had a bat that came from mid-off, all the way around via extra cover, backward point, gully, third slip, second slip, first slip, <laughs> to play the ball. He was a wonderful player. But I suppose what, what you're asking is something slightly different. Does it have to come down? Does the last foot or two of, of, of that bat swing have to be straight? Does it have to meet you just the ball have to straight hit it. rather than from slip to mid-on? Just have to hit it. Yeah, However way you want to do it, you've got to hit yeah. it. It's each individual up to their own. I think it's the length that stud him, not the way that he's played. Okay. Interesting. I agree with the getting to the pitch of the ball. That's key. Um, uh, I think probably you have to play for it not to spin but anyway that, that's, it's, it's so difficult 66 for 6 unbelievable England are 33 in front but they're 6 down we're on the second day and it's all happening didn't quite carry the slip as folks went forward and Aksha Patel got a lot of bounce it hit the well I suppose the top left hand corner of the bat as you look at it right hand corner as you hold it and didn't carry the gully as it oh that does bounce dramatically doesn't mm. it well, we could talk about how Ben Fox played in the first innings and... And now that's a, a forward push off a ball that didn't spin. And uh, so there's nothing in it, no run. I mean, and we, we talked about the situation he was in was like, what, what does he do? Does he play a few shots? 
Stokes, uh, Folks rather, defends on, on the front foot. It's very hard to keep up with this. With, with <laughs> the overs are bowled so quickly by the spinners. That's another impact on the batsman. You've got to be, you know, your mind has to be so in tune with the moment because ball after ball comes quickly and threatens you. Here's Akshar again and back goes Folks who's beaten and so nearly bowled. That ball didn't do a great deal. Thankfully for Folks, it just turned a little bit and therefore it not only beat the bat but it beat the off stump. Lovely bit of bowling, lovely, lovely control. It's his length, that's what's done it for me, for him. As Goffey um, takes off the headphones, so too KP. Steve Harmison moves in. Um, but uh, it's, it's all about the, the length, consistent length, making the batsman play at that. There it is again, that hits his pad, but that one's going on down the leg side. And Folks is feeling for the ball here, a good player of spin. And it's difficult out there. There's no doubt that to, as the intensity increases, the bubble you're in, seems to tighten around your neck hugely demanding circumstances here in Ahmedabad and that's a little outside edge that goes uh, uh, well for a couple through square cover and that's the end of the over 35 the advantage now England at 68 for 6 it's also from Aksar's point of view it's the angle that he bowls from the angle that he comes from you know why do the wide of the crease from around the wicket to the right hander which always seems to it looks from a batsman's point of view that it's just drifting down leg side and then all of a sudden he's got that sharp turn that takes the outside edge but the one that goes straight on is the one that's caused a hell of a lot of problems for the England batsman it's been a masterclass by Axar and Ashwin um, from a spin bowling point of view um, in England again have, have looked all at, all at sea in from, from a defensive point of view um, mm. I, I don't know the last time that an England side went five consecutive innings without making 200 um, or well I don't know whatever it is 100 and whatever the highest score is it would be the second innings after Moen Ali's at a long slot in Chennai about 160 they got as I recall but anyway here's uh, Ashwin he bowls again and back goes Joffre Archer who's out there and taken guard we've almost omitted to mention that one thing we haven't seen on TV is the replay of the Ben Stokes wicket and, and wh whether or not he should have reviewed it oh, Mark Butcher says he did see it and it was out it was clipping leg stump so oh that might be out too very full and LBW yes Archer swinging across the line off a ball that was half volley length or even fuller than that and he's in front of all three is it going on across him and missing off stump? That's the only hope he has, I think, from that line of delivery, that angle of delivery. Oh, dear me. Third up by to director, play review for LBW. Original decision is out. It's a fair delivery. Spin vision, please. Yeah, hold it nice and slow, please. While passing very close to the bat, can we have ultra edge, please? Yeah, thank you. We're waiting, we're waiting. Original decision out. Roll it, roll it. Roll it, roll it, roll it through to the bat, please. Yeah, flat line when the ball passes the bat, ball tracking, please. Yeah, building ball tracking, please. Ashwin is on the screen saying out, just give it out, it's out, and I think he's right by the way. We're going to wait now for the third umpire to... Yep. Pitching in line, impact in line, wicket hitting, on-field umpire on screen please. Nitin, stay with the original decision. You're on screen, give out please. Well, we heard that and it could hardly have been more out. It was hitting middle stump, <laughs> two thirds of the way out. Yeah, that, absolutely Mark, that was as out as they come. Um, I'm not sure what Joffre was thinking, I think he, he probably knew when he went over to speak to Ben Folks that that was a uh, game set match and he had to walk off. Um, and again, a good bit of bowling by, by Ashwin, just sensed that Joffre Archie was going to play a big shot and he's just so that little bit fuller, that little bit faster, a little bit flatter, 
and uh, Joffre Archer was t in two minds with her to sweep, not to sweep, and by the time he made his decision, balls hit him in the flush of the pad, and he's LBW, and he's out, and again, 400 test match wickets, Mark. Well, that's a 400. moment, it's yeah, a moment that, that we, we need to focus on. 77 test matches, 400 wickets at 25, that's a terrific average for a spinner, 2.8 is the economy rate and now he holds the ball aloft it might be his hometown that was Chennai where he made 100 and took wickets this is Ahmedabad and my goodness me the crowd is just loving this this is the stuff of a champion he raises the ball again they raise the level of their applause the decibel is going through the roof here fabulous Fabulous for cricket to be so celebrated. Here's Ashwin again, bowling to the new batsman. Jack Leach, something of a cult hero, who bowled very well earlier today to get England back into the match with Joe Root's 5-8 performance. But the batsmen have found it close to impossible out there. Ashwin again, 400 wickets aim, two tremendously confident and solid defensive strokes from Leach. We see the full face of that bat. But so much of Leach's mind must be lost in a whirl of confusion here. Again, uh, nice, another forward defensive stroke, well played. Ashwin smiles, Ashwin who's had his head shaved at the sides and at the back, whose beard is coated with sun cream around his cheeks, but whose pride in holding aloft that pink ball knows no boundary as he beats uh, Jack Leach outside off stump with one that turns and bounces. It's a super over was that, 68 for 7, England just 35 in front and in danger of perishing by a mighty margin. Yeah, 400 test match wickets, 77 games, it's a phenomenal achievement, phenomenal feat and mark the noise of the crowd, you listened to when he got that 400 wickets and this place is only what, just over, just under half full, can you imagine if the full stadium was there? It is amazing. It's 400 wickets, 77 test matches, an average of 25. Yeah. It is ridiculous. What's interesting is that he and Jadeja have the best averages by a long way. So Kumble, who was a tight bowler, we all agree, gave nothing away. He took 609 wickets at an average of 29 and a half. Ashwin is, that's a forward defensive stroke by Foats, gets a single for it. It rolls out onto the offside, bring uh, Leach onto strike. But it's interesting that Kumble, who takes all those wickets at 29 and a half, Ashwin's taken them at 25, 400 of them, and Jadeja at 24. Now that tells you about two bowlers in the modern era, about so many more LBWs going their way because of DRS, about changing batting techniques. Absolutely fascinating. I was just going to mention that, Mark. You, you, the other two on there. Here's... Uh, Asha Patel bowling round the wicket at Leach, he asked for LBW, but the ball didn't really straighten enough, it was a reasonable thought from the bowler, too much could go wrong with that, it might have pitched outside leg stump, he's bowling round the wicket to the left hander, so the, again the angles are extreme. Leach in spectacles, takes guard, pats the ground, an orthodox stance, not many batsmen still have that as he pats the ground and waits, he doesn't stand with the bat up, he comes down the pitch, looks to work it leg side, it hits the pad but there's no run, Leach of course made 90 odd against uh, Ireland at Lords in a crucial test match innings and uh, hung on against the Australians with Ben Stokes so famously the day that he became a cult hero. Yet to get off the mark, he goes uh, half forward to Akshay Patel, the ball rolls out to short leg who does the fielding leach paces around the crease studious almost bookish in his look down he comes looks to drive over the top gets most of it gets plenty of it a lovely crisp hit for six straight down the ground by jack leach a crisp hit for six goes straight over the top of axar patel's head Man on the boundary, on the fence, doesn't bother Jack Leach. Shows the batsman how it's done, how to be positive, how to keep your ship when you're attacking the ball. Fantastic shot there by Leach. Miller Champion Hall back, eh? Love to see it. Somerset. Yeah. Old style bat makers, good people. And 
getting a bit of coverage there for a six hit by Jack Leach, Somerset bowler. In comes uh, Axa again and bowls just back of the length. Back goes uh, Leach, defends it nicely, knocks it down. No great sweat there. Six for Folks, six for Leach, 75 for seven. The lead 42 now. Then the, the point I was going to make, Mark, was you've seen Cumbler and Harbajan quite high up on that list of over 400 wickets. I think Cumbler was 29 average, Harbajan was 32. You mentioned about DRS. Do you believe, because you, you were around commentating at the time as well, the class of player, or is it just simply DRS? Well, DRS has changed batting, particularly against spin. In the days of old, you were pretty confident a lot of the time if you were well forward to bat alongside pad and let the ball hit the pad almost deliberately you can't possibly do that now so you have to lead with your bat and that means that you're often playing down the wrong line but we're going to discuss that in detail during the dinner break uh, Mark Butcher will join Kevin Peterson uh, there's a, a nice spinning delivery from Ashwin that comes back to hit the pad as Ben Stokes leans forward searches for the ball himself doesn't know where it's gone looks outside um, off stump finds it way behind square on the offside no run from it Ashwin again back goes folks to defend the time is uh, called a past six in, uh, in uh, India and we're coming well, towards that twilight period oh that's a good take by Rishabh Pant who manages to cling on with both hands to a ball that bounces well down the leg side had, had folks turn around to have a look he'd have thought wow I'd have been pleased with that Rishabh Pant kept wicket very well particularly in the last test match that's when again folks looks to drive and it's a good stop uh, diving Virat Kohli at short with wicket so there's no run from that nice clip drive type thing crowd much more animated than they were earlier in the day when England were taking Indian wickets as Foles goes forward oh and a direct hit would have been a run out they stole a single from nothing a mad run really but they got away with it because the field of chasing the leg slip hadn't even realized they'd gone they sort of snuck it in there if there is such a word yeah, a little bit of hesitation. Rishi Pan got very, very excited. I think anybody else apart from Pajara, Pajara is not one of India's better movers. Somebody a bit lighter on his feet might have been, had the England batsman in trouble. Interesting to see Pajara pick up an IPL contract with Chennai Super Kings. I, I well, thought that was a. He went to the right side, didn't he? The dad's army of the, of the IPL. <laughs> well, yeah, some of them are. They've got some good youngsters too. But his. Uh, Ashwin again, he bowls to Folks, who plays forward, misses it, it hits the pad and loops up onto the, uh, well, really pretty much straight down the pitch. And there's no run, so the end of that to Ashwin over. 75 for 7, the England score. Folks has 6, Leach has 6, the lead is 42. An extraordinary day of Test match cricket. Really, um, you know, I, I, I can only tell you that India were bowled out for 145 and England are now 75 for 7 so that's 14 wickets already and we haven't even reached the end of the second session yeah it's so bizarre this test match and there's a lot of talk and I'm happy to start, sit here as a so-called expert and say I, I'm wrong I was wrong the team the, the, the team was well you're listening to us uh, here and we're partners with the, the Times and the Sunday Times on TalkSport 2, delighted to, to work with them on this cricket. What cricket it's been, incredible to watch. Mark Butcher's taking over the commentary. Thanks, Mark. Yeah, extraordinary is a word that fits quite beautifully as Axar is in to uh, Jack Leach, who pushes forward, defends the ball, and the bowler will pick it up in his follow through. The narrative will be that England's batting against spin is shocking, hopeless, no footwork missing straight balls etc XR is in once more Leach goes down the pitch and swings it into the leg side it will go a couple of bounces out to uh, Rohit at deep mid wicket England will pick up a single and extend the lead to 43 but I just want to throw this one out there India home team ex experts at playing in these sort of conditions lost 7 for 31 this morning and 5 of those to Joe Root 
who in 6.2 overs picked up the figures of five for eight. So yeah. that gives you an idea about England's bowling balance and also gives you an idea about this surface. Now, you cannot tell me that a part-time off spinner against India at home should be able to take five wickets for eight runs. As Aksar is in and uh, firing that ball in flat and quick and Folks manages to keep it out with the toe end of his bat. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you, Butch, and I'm, I'm, I was one of them so-called experts that said England have got the team right. Ashak Chopra, he said he got a team right, but I'm happy to say uh, on this surface it wasn't the right call. We did need the extra spinner. Aksar is in, and again, that ball uh, hits the surface and uh, goes straight on. But Ben Folks has just enough of the inside edge on it to knock it into mid-wicket for a single. 44 now. That lead of 44. I mean, these, these aren't going to be straightforward runs to score. I mean, I, I would imagine that England will not bowl a single ball of seam when it gets a chance for them to, to get the, the ball in the hand. And if they do bowl any seam, the batsman will be sounding the bugle and trying to smash every single ball out of the park. So Haksar is into the left-handed leech. There is a little puff of dust as the ball disturbs the surface. He knocks it into short leg and again there's no run you might see you possibly could see Jimmy Anderson because the, the light's starting to go with a brand new ball we did see before dinner last night yeah, big turn and that's I think probably by the sound of that that's hit Jack Leach in the in the gut <laughs> it certainly hit something soft as it kicked and bounced and hit him in the belly button from Axar and again there's no run Yes. Oh, it was soft. It was a it little was, bit lower than the belly button. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> top of the thigh. But bounce, huge bounce again. And you know, talked about balance of sides and everything like that. But you just have to look at the pitch for me. I think a huge question mark on on the surface. Is it ready for test? Is it right for test cricket? Is it not? Did England get the team right or not? All these question marks have come. But this surface has, I think, been very much below par for two sides of what you would hope would be high quality and I think the pitchers probably let the players down is that uh, would that be would that be right uh, yeah well, I mean I thought that the previous test match in Chennai had nothing to do with who won the game it's just I think if you're international cricketer you deserve to turn up on something that's been prepared a little bit I mean if I were a groundsman I'd be embarrassed to uh, to have that be the best that I could do for an international game but that's just me in goes Ashwin, the carom ball, and uh, folks keeps it out first with bat. The ball that has so much top spin on it that it almost revs between his legs back onto the stumps, but it uh, is stopped by his back foot. I mean, I think that's all. That's what I'm talking about. And listen, this is fabulous entertainment. If you've uh, had the morning to uh, to sit in front of your television screen, you've watched 14 wickets fall. Batsmen are being made to look extremely foolish. Listening to it on the radio in the car. Sorry, I'm sat in front of a television screen. That's where the confusion comes from. <laughs> Folks just takes a couple of steps down and, uh, and plays it nicely with the spin to uh, Bumra, who's got his uh, got his trainers on. Haven't seen him bowl a single ball as yet. <laughs> and uh, England pick up a single. I mean, England get 75, 80. Dare we even? dream a hundred ahead I mean this is going to be one heck of a finish it's going to be over today you would imagine one way or the other yeah oh, I think it's going to be over today yeah definitely for sure but as I said it comes back to the the what what England have got options when it comes to the bowling department you've got Jack Leach do they go with Joe Root straight on from uh, Ashwin to Leach you dead pads it I suppose out into the offside and there's no running and 45 ahead now I mean we're talking a lot about you know England's bowlers or whatever you get bowled out for 112 you're in trouble another sharp turning off break beats uh, Jack Leach outside of the off stump however when you select your team you're selecting it with the proviso that you think you're going to make par with the bat you're not selecting the side thinking well if we get bowled out for 112 we're in trouble and uh, to me, given that two-thirds of these matches are played in daylight, I suppose, and that the, uh, the floodlights only really come in for a, for a third of the match, three quicks and two spinners would always be the way forward. As Leach uh, plays a flat-batted drive through extra cover, picked up by uh, Jaspreet Bumrah 
That's a long off. England pick up a single. 28 overs have gone. England are 46 runs ahead. Score 79 for 7 here on TalkSport 2. Kevin Peterson joins uh, myself and Steve Harmison. I agree with that, Butch, and I, I do. I think the balance of the side, I'm, like I've said before, hand, hands up, I, I've got this, this wrong because I, I thought they picked the right balance of that side. Um, but you picked Don Bess in this side when you haven't got any confidence in him first and foremost if he is the expense of Don Best and he gives away half a dozen full tosses and he gives England uh, India 30 or 40 runs then is that the right call so you've yeah. got your best spinner actually sitting in Warwickshire you've got two other spinners who are kids yeah. whipped away into the leg side Jack Leach it lands in front of the man uh, again it's Bumrah this time at deep backward square leg uh, and they get a run. I mean, one thing I'll say to you about that with Don Best. Don Best has you know, picked up a five for in the, in the first test match, picked up five wickets in Sri Lanka and didn't bowl great. OK, you know, he needed a little bit of fortune. He bowled really well yeah. to dismiss Virat Kohli in the first innings at Chennai and, you know, and then seemed to, to, to run out of puff a little bit in that second innings. And Zach Sire is in. And that's hit, uh, folks, on the shin, in front of everything. We've seen this happen time and time again. Anil Chowdhury raises the finger. Ben Folks... Uh, reviews it's a sort of a review with a shrug of the shoulders rather than a Not review a with any definite uh, uh, definite LBW hope or confidence how it's a fair delivery and uh, could this be the eighth the on-field on -field decision is out let's have a look yeah nice and slow again bat and pad are nice close together close. I think well, that's uh, missed the inside the edge and uh, right. has hit Ben Folks underneath the knee roll. I think he might be struggling here. Roll it. Roll it. Can you go one frame back, please? Pretty similar to the root one. There's a little bit of bat. There's a lot of pad. Very, very similar. Is it going to save roll it, roll folks here? Can you give me something from the offset, please? Or can you zoom this angle? Has, well, he's, there has he's a, hit the bottom of his pad? There's, yeah. a, there's a noise, there's a little spike mm. before the ball definitely crashes back. into the bat. It's not quite as difficult to uh, decipher Roll as the back. Joe Root one, where it looked for all the world as though it had hit both at the same time with Joe forward. Root. And again, the on-field decision go back is to out. Bridge, please? Yeah, please, thank you. Third umpire has to see enough reason to overturn that decision. One frame back. He did with the Joe Root call, and I, and I found that quite extraordinary. One really, frame back. He was able to next to the bat, please. Yeah, there's a bit of bat. There's, a, there's definitely a space there between bat and ball now, and yeah, they've frozen forward. it there, and then they're going to go onto the pad, yeah, and then there's land, a big. The ball passes the bat. Yeah, you can hear ball it. Ball tracking, please. Yeah. Kevin Peterson uh, outside off. thinks that it's missed the bat. Impact in line. We can Third sitting. umpire All thinks it's missed the bat. And it please. crashes in the leg stuff. That and is the end of Ben Folks. That is the eighth wicket the fall for England. And that is another five wicket haul for Rakshal Patel. Quite incredible test match career for the left arm spinner. Brought in as a replacement for uh, Jadeja, a man who we thought couldn't be replaced for India but my goodness me has Axel Patel proven that a particular theory to be wrong there's been one or two theories proven wrong in this test match yeah. series so far Folks has gone for eight England 80 for eight and this match careers careers towards a conclusion here on day two on TalkSport 2 how do England win this test match they 47 runs ahead and India lost a hell of a lot of wickets this morning Root yes Root got the wickets and I also think that there'll be a couple of Indian batsmen that'll be thinking, goodness gracious, how do I even get to 10 here? England still have to think that they can win this test match. This is an absolute minefield. Turn, bounce, some that don't turn, 47 runs on the board. And I know it sounds so silly for me to say this, but runs on the board, India have got to bat last. I'd agree with that, Kevin, if it was the other way around. If it was England that were f needed 47 to win. Sure. But I think India in their own back garden. Rohit Sharma, Virat Kohli. Virat Kohli comes out, he could put a hole in it. In Does it. Joe Rip open the bowling with Jack Leach? No, no choice. No choice. He has to. I, I, all eggs in one basket. It has to be it has to, Yeah, it is. It is an all eggs in one basket scenario, I think. Stuart Broad. 
a man uh, who is used to the extraordinary. What do you think, Butch? Root opens the bowling? Well, he's got to, I think. I, I think if you're, if you're, if I'm facing Seam on this pitch at the moment, you're thinking you've got 20 in, 20 in and over. Yeah. And that's the game done. Yeah. <laughs> Broad is on the back foot, manages to get the Q end of the ball on it, keep it out to uh, back a point. I mean, go, going back to the Don Best uh, scenario, the Don Best bowling on this surface, you, your margin for error as a spinner, I reckon, is about two metres, two and a half metres. Now, as long as you're not bowling full tosses, you picked up, you could pick up a five for no problem. Oi! Axar Patel is in and, and Broad is on the front foot. That, and the, so the confidence of Don Best is, is back sky high again. You know, it's a win-win. That's the problem, Butch. He, he, he bowled 20-odd full tosses in the but last I know, two I know test he, matches. I know he in. did. I know he did. I was there. Off the glove. And uh, Rissab Pant dives. So does Pajara. Di Pant dives to his right. Pajara dives to his left. And between them, they manage to stop the ball for going for any buys, any further runs. England three runs away from a 50-run lead. Butch, just to finish on the team and the, that sort of stuff, because there's a lot being said on it, England possibly felt as though they didn't have a choice. They didn't have, with Moen going home, they didn't have that second spinner. So they've gone and reverted to type and gone, what is going to give us the more control in the game? And they've gone with Broad from that reason and that yeah. reason alone. I, I, I don't doubt that. But again, Stuart Broad bowled, what, six overs first innings? He's probably not going to bowl again in the test match. The facts of the matter is England don't have their best team in India. This is a huge series. It defines you as a player. It, def it can sometimes define your post-career. They haven't picked the best players to play against India in India. So there's probably no, not much point in getting too emotional about it. No, certainly not. Spot on. Flighty yeah, ball, turned, bounce. Jack Leach with a, a, a wry grin on his face lets this one bounce through to the keeper. Got a huge job to do here, Jack Leach, in both facets of the game. As Ashwin is in again, and it's a beautiful delivery. Just flighty, drifted in towards middle and leg, turning sharply past the outside edge of the left hand and gropes at it once more Pant takes a really good take once again it's one thing that's been a bonus of the two pitches that we've seen these last two test matches you've seen some absolutely mint to use a Mark Woodism wicket keeping straight ball from Ashwin and uh, Leach keeps it out just especially from Pant because he looks like a cat in a hot tin roof sometimes and, uh, but do you think Jack Rich Leach is going down the wicket punching gloves to Stuart Broad and saying get me 20 more runs and I'll win the game for <laughs> well, you mate yeah, I hope he is I hope he is <laughs> out gone flighted Leach could not resist he had a little swipe at one tried to drive it through extra cover out of the rough it turned and it landed in the pouches of uh, Ajinkya Rahane at slip England are nine down now Stuart Broad looks nonplussed at the non-striker's end. Jack Leach will go off and get his bowling boots on. Put on his lucky socks or his magic underpants and hope that he can bowl England to an astonishing victory here in this test match in Ahmedabad. But that is the ninth down. Ashwin picks up yet another wicket. 401 for him. And uh, we're about to have another change of innings here, folks. Yeah, there's a lot of people saying the wicket's rubbish, the wicket is this, the wicket is that. There's two teams playing a test match at the moment where anyone could win this test match. Anyone. So you've just got to try and find a way to win this test match. We can moan and say whatever we want, but it is what it is. It doesn't matter what we're saying on the 17th floor of a building in London or what the commentators say or what 1.2 billion people are saying in India or 63 million people are saying here in the UK. This is about two teams playing against each other on a wicket that's the same for both teams. And this will tell you who's the better players of spin. And that's a fascinating thing Simple. about this test match, Kevin. Why it's been exciting is because... I think it's been teams, great. It's been fantastic. It's been great to watch and great to comment on. Yeah. It's exciting. You, know, you get 500 players, 400, and we're all asleep for two days. This is... This is, for me, it's brilliant viewing. Is it gonna, is it gonna bring people to love the game? Possibly not. Purists will not love what's going on I think it here. will. Well, no, 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 forget, forget the, I think purists will love the fact that they can see Joe Root go about an innings in a masterful way. And he may have got 20, but it's worth 80. Some of the other players getting themselves in. Some of the players that have frailties against this. And that's why I say this is such a big series. In India, it defines you as a player. You want to finish your career knowing you've played against the best. 
What about that 60 I got in Ahmedabad? What about the 100 I got in Chennai that Joe Root can talk about? What about the uh, eight for that Jack Leach is going to take defending there 50 we go. for England? So there we go. No, so I'm, that's what I'm saying. I'm with you 100%. I'm with you, I'm, I'm with you 100%. Yeah, that's I'm loving what I'm watching here. I'm me also, too. I'm also thinking about what I'm going to be doing for the next three days. Well, there should have been a test match on. Poor old folks in lockdown looking forward to watching the match over the weekend. They're going to have nothing to watch <laughs> or listen to on TalkSport 2. Huge turn. Huge turn, brilliant diving, catch from Rahane, it's lit. The crowd think it's come off the bat, but it's turned so big that it's missed everything. Jeez, there's only 40,000. Imagine there was 100,000 and imagine the noise. Just imagine, you just want to be there. Well, I, I remember the, the feeling of walking out Boxing Day at the MCG for the first time. As uh, Ashwin's in again, nicely played by James Anderson, forward defensive, the end of the uh, 30th over, England 80 for 9, lead is still 47, but I remember that feeling the very first time walking out there on Boxing Day, I think greeted by Ian, Ian Healy saying that it, it's no easier at number 3 Butch having got in in the first over, Atherton caught Healy, bold McGrath. McGrath, yeah, he was absolutely right because I got a duck as well. Um, <laughs> But that feeling of being out there in a coliseum where there are 100,000 people, it is extraordinary. There's nothing like it. I don't think, I don't think um, if I can remember back that far, that sort of I, I reacted particularly well to it. It kind of it made you feel minuscule as you walked out there. And that's not a feeling you want to carry with you to the middle. And I think, Butch, that's what's, that's what's happened in this game as well. The crowd, the effect and everything that goes with it. The talk of the pitch and, you know, substandard whatever. I think the atmosphere, the crowd and the pressure that comes with that has helped, you know, to fast forward this game at such a rate. Well, I, I, yeah, I, I take that. I, I don't think that these players now who are used to playing in, in T20 tournaments around the world are as bothered by crowds as perhaps we might have been back in the, back in the old days. But I, I take your point. I, I, I just think that having been skittled twice as they were in the last test match in Chennai and come up against a, a very similar surface again here in Ahmedabad, England's batsmen have not been able to come up with an answer to the spin. Interestingly, India's batsmen haven't been able to do it either. And even more interestingly, we've got a bowling change. Washington Sundar for the first time in the game and he rags one straight past the outside <laughs> edge of Stuart Broad. I mean, it doesn't matter, doesn't matter which spinner you give the ball to, folks. You're in the game. If you can, uh, if you can tweak it a little bit, you are in the game. 47 ahead. England. Lots of noise from the crowd. Lots of noise from Rishabh Pant, who's living his best life in Test match cricket, as he has done since uh, Melbourne. In the Boxing Day Test match, Pant takes another fizzing off break from uh, Sundar. And the game, again, stands still as far as run scoring is concerned. Broad and Anderson at the crease. England's last hope. Broad gets away. He's off the mark with a, a nicely guided back foot defensive that goes out towards Point, who uh, was granting him that single. I'm not so sure of this bowling change. Not so sure of this bowling change at all. I understand, yes, there's two left-handed batters against an off-spinner. But Akshar Patel coming around the wicket, he's still attacking both edges. Washington Sunder's more of a one-day bowler, he's more of a T20 bowler. Seen him produce some pretty good numbers for RCB. He does okay in T20 stuff when you go after him. But Akshar, how would you want to give the ball up here? I'm not so sure this is a clever move. Just watching a replay here. And it the, uh, the television cameras are, are noticing a little edge on that uh, first delivery. Tiniest, tiny little flick from the, the outside edge of Stuart Broad's bat. Never mind, that's gone. Anderson goes for the reverse sweep and he's been given out. Well, that was uh, an extraordinary end, a very low-key end to England's innings. Anderson is thinking about reviewing it. India barely appealed, really. Rishabh Pant has taken the catch. England actually have no uh, no uh, reviews left, so it makes no difference whatsoever. Anil Chowdhury has put the finger up. England's second innings is over. They've been dismissed for 81. Washington Sundar, the only other man to uh, Akshar Patel and uh, Ravi Chandran Ashwin to pick up a wicket. The only other man to bowl an over in the innings. Uh, 
England dismissed for 81 to go along with the 112 that they made in the first innings. So England, having failed to make 300 in two innings in the second test match in Chennai, have met, failed to make 200 in two innings in the third test match in Ahmedabad. India will need 49 runs to win. And uh, unsurprisingly, Virat Kohli and co are cock a hoop out there, as are the uh, 40 plus thousand fans here at the uh, Narendra Modi Stadium in Ahmedabad. Extraordinary scenes as uh, Akshar, who has picked up his third five wicket haul in as many test matches, follows Ravichandra and Ashwin into the dressing rooms up the long tunnel the long sloping tunnel that leads up to one of four dressing rooms here at the stadium Ashwin has gone past at 400 wickets he's got uh, Kapil Dev uh, Anil Kumble and uh, Harbhajan Singh in front of him and uh, as far as England concerned well here's what happened the uh, first to go was uh, Zach Crawley, bowled by Axel Patel, the very first ball of the innings for Nort. Johnny Bairstow was then uh, given out LBW off the second ball. We thought that Akshar had a, a hat-trick. Uh, that was uh, overturned, the ball bouncing over the stumps. He was then bowled by the very next delivery for Nort. So England were uh, none for two from uh, three deliveries. Dom Sibley was the next to go with a score on 19. He went for seven, caught Pant, bowled Akshar. Uh, Stokes was next, 25, the top score of the innings for England with the score on 50. Uh, he was LBW to Ashwin. Joe Root, then perhaps the uh, the big wicket, the pivotal wicket of the innings. He went for 19 LBW once again to Akshar Patel. The score was uh, 56 and England led by just 23. Ollie Pope was next to go, 12 for him, bowled uh, by Ashwin. Uh, Archer followed him, LBW to Ashwin. Folks, LBW to Akshar. Leach, Court Rahani, bowled Ashwin for 9 and then James Anderson was the last to go. Caught behind, attempting a reverse sweep by uh, Rishabh Pant off the bowling of Washington Sundar. Uh, Borchinets, again, uh, just a lot, lot like the first innings. England you know, bowled out very, very cheaply. Excellent bowling by Axar Patel, but 400 test match wickets for Ravi Chandra Ashwin. What a fantastic achievement that is. You know, absolute superstar for India, bat and ball. Um, and he proved that in the second innings there. And you know, England just got to hope that something special can happen. You know, 50 to run, 49 runs to win. You, know, you wouldn't give England a hope and a prayer. But the way things have gone in this test match, boy, expect anything could happen. 